And we're live. Sick. Sick. Hey, I better get my phone out. Welcome to the Friendly Geordie's uh, pre-show. Yeah, if I can borrow a phrase from Lewis Spears. G'day, cunt. G'day. Is he on like triple yeah, M or so, something? You're so polite. Used to be. Um, and, uh, well, but they had a bit of a falling out. <laughs> they had a falling out. In that uh, I think Triple M is basically on the verge of bankruptcy and couldn't afford him. Couldn't afford Lewis Spears. I don't think so. Shit. Well, who can they afford? It's like, isn't know. it just Ugly Dave now? Moon Man. Spe- damn. And Murdoch's <laughs> incessant attacks on him. Go on. Let's just dive right in, shall we? <laughs> well, this has got to be the top talking point of today's <laughs> podcast. And I'm crossing it out as No, you you're not crossing it, it out. It. No, we're going in depth into this. <laughs> this will fine. be a multi podcast <laughs> investigation <laughs> into the Murdoch Press's, quote, attack campaign Read on. It. This is, this is Miss Love's <laughs> suggestions for what we should be discussing on this podcast. Quote, and it's one of the top things that he's written as well. Uh, <coughs> up there with uh, the failed Venezuelan coup and the COVID safe app. Th- these are all old topics, so we're just trying to mine through them. But the news cycle is moving too fast. And we really needed to get to this one, which was <laughs> the Murdoch media's attack campaign on Dave Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> What happened Dave to Dave Andrews? <laughs> what are you thinking about, Dougley Dave? I think he was thinking about Dave Hughes. Uh, maybe both. I don't, I don't know. This is a while ago. It's funny. You, yeah. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Such a good name. <laughs> if anyone's called Dave, give us a shout out in the comments. Like, I need to, <laughs> I, need to I don't know, can we like your comment or something? Because Dave is a very undersold name <laughs> in our generation. Dictated Dave. <laughs> Hashtag Dictated Dave. Let's bring it back, guys. Finally! Let's bring it back. I mean, let's uh, bring We it need around. to talk about this scare I'm campaign sick. around I'm, Dave. I'm just sick <laughs> of the Murdoch media <laughs> clamping down on Dave Andrews Poor when he's Dave. done so well, you know, uh, <laughs> attacking... Uh, in his job, work. which I assume is just uh, one of those indiscriminate businesses at a suburban <laughs> tennis court where they give out like rackets with <laughs> and you forget to bring yours and that's like an economy as if someone isn't there called Dave Andrews. That guy <laughs> owns that business. Wait, so his name <laughs> is not Dave Andrews? Miss, you've got another request yeah. from I'm Tongan. Yeah. He's saying, Miss Love, please impersonate Ali and say, welcome to the friendly Jimmy's podcast. Uh Welcome to the Friendly Jimmy's podcast. Is that pretty good? I don't know. Well, I couldn't tell the difference between Friendly Geordie's podcast and SBS Desi Radio. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the, the hell vibe is that? that we're going for. Wait, Desert Radio? It's like Desi. What's that? It just means brown, I think. Oh. But it's just Indian. Oh, okay. Pretty much. Indian and friends. <laughs> <laughs> Including Pakistan. Do you know there was a <laughs> Desi Friends too? What? Like there was a TV show which was an exact rip. Oh yeah, that's of right. Friends. You seen it? Yes, I have. I've saw I, I saw one episode. But you know what's funny? Like it's it's almost <laughs> like they took the script of the episode, put it into Google Translate, and couldn't read it in Hindi, and they just gave that script back to them. <laughs> They're doing exactly the same. Sometimes it doesn't even make sense. Well, are they in Central Park or is it Central Dal? Well, the the thing is, like they're saying they're in India. But, like, even their, like, apartment is an exact replica of that apartment well, from Well, are France. you kidding? No, 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 I'm not kidding. Well, what, okay, so Central Perk is Central Perk. Yeah, well, it, it's, I think it was named something different, but it was just that. That's and you know what else as well? You wouldn't no really rights. have to translate the song. The song sounds like a Bollywood, like, the, yeah. the beginning to Friends sounds like a Bollywood song, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> and it seems to have the same instruments, that... It does that's like a, a sitar. sitar. Yeah, that's, that's a sitar. Uh, someone wants your Instagram, they can add you. Oh, my God. What is it? Sandy is outing me. What? What'd she say? First, she said, oh, it's um, Ali's birthday on Friday. And I was like, oh, all right, that's sweet. But now she's telling day. everyone how old I'm getting. Not today. Yeah, no, but Friday. still. still. But yeah, but now she's like, he's turning 29. Oh, you're not at the big 3-0 yet, mate. You just hold I'm on for dear in. life. You enjoy all the eels you can before you fucking turn dirty. It's edging it all goes downhill. Your back goes, your arms goes, all fucking even your fucking brain turns to mush, mate. 29 you can is, that, can't you? 29 is worse than 30. It's like that, you know, when you're about to jump off a plane. I disagree. It's worse <laughs> when you're going up than when you have to jump out. Yeah, I, you're right, actually. You, you 30 you is the that. bungee. You know what? I like being 30 a lot more than being in my 20s. Way more. 
Well, it's just something it of just like when you're uh, really famous and successful. <laughs> yeah, that helps. That does help as well. I got to say that that is a big plus. The fact that I don't work at Doors Plus. Yeah, because Doors Plus. Isn't yeah. See that? No, he's right. Ali's right there. It, it does help when you're like rich and famous. I'm pretty sure like if we were like doing our destinies, we should have worked in a box factory or possibly BWS. I don't think we'd enjoy our third. Yeah, it's kind of like the Coke brother that had. Uh, you know, like terminal bowel cancer for like 25 years, being like, I just don't understand what this cancer business is all about. It's not that debilitating. <laughs> it's like, yeah, if you have the greatest doctors on earth, on earth. <laughs> and that you hire as private house doctors, so yeah. no one else gets to have those it's doctors, like, yeah. just you, that cancer's pretty good. Like the old guy with Viagra saying, ah, am I, is it just me or fucking easy? It's easy. <laughs> it just like, takes 20 minutes, you pop yeah. a pill and you're good to go. That doctor, and I assume a limitless supply of Coke. Or his name is Coke. <laughs> the the can or the the drug? The can. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I thought. Um, or why? Why though? I just don't understand why that's always the go to with you. Like even when there's drugs on yeah, the table, you just true, be like, I know. "Hmm, okay, just uh, free, uh, unbelievably expensive drugs, but also." Hmm, you sure this is for free? You don't want me to pitch in for this Coke? All right, you're lost. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Just go over the Coke. I don't think we can say drugs on, but go yeah, over. You can, you, can you? Miss. It's not feet. Oh, yeah. Go over the Coke straight what for like think we're the, on? the old Domino's pizza. <laughs> like Johnny Carson. <laughs> pretty I'm pretty much. sure that you can say this on Triple M. You, you can say that any I drugs is okay. I, to say. I, I there was a whole campaign, Shane Nader drugs. Like it's <laughs> yeah, he said it. George H. W. Bush said drugs. <laughs> I think I didn't Reagan say drugs. Said drugs. No, not drugs. George H. W. Bush used to do drugs. <laughs> I mean, Coke, <laughs> man. Yeah, specifically Coke too. He did. Well, Twitch is Johnny Carson. Twitch, Twitch is Johnny Carson for, for whatever year it is. And you reckon? Just sort of like, I wouldn't go that far. You can't show. Don't show your feet. You know, it's weird. Yeah, that's true. Um, Just just before we get stuck in, do you, what do you guys think of if we cover Hi this yo. this topic as well? Jordan, read that out. US elections. Who, and didn't even, classic miss of style, should have been who will win. Who, apostrophe, double L win. Who will win. <laughs> US Guys elections who will win <laughs> well <clears throat> you think, seem to think that we're on Triple M I seem to think listening to that that we're on like Georgia Radio's <laughs> Virgin <laughs> FM oh shit what Virgin Flights yeah Virgin Flights has its own radio <laughs> stations for like third world countries and Dubai Fuck. and stuff so I'd imagine they'd have one in Georgia like Coles Radio Georgia yeah, yeah. and we are predicting Trump for 2020 <laughs> <laughs> The odds, the same thing will ha- happen in the last election. They couldn't I, predict I, I, it. I really think Bernie's in for this one. <laughs> Dude, I shouldn't have called out Sandy. Dude, yeah. How sad is it Why? that Bernie Sanders went from revolutionary leader to meme within the space of, what, I three know. months? I know. Well, look, he's a know, meme now. He's a, meme. A, he, he's a used up bullet. He's a used up bullet, which but, is a meme. But that bullet... I think has done shit. I think there's like a whole progressive yeah. movement now. That's, that's true. He helped Biden be like, oh, windmills, Jack, right? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know what he did. But I did hear Jimmy Jimmy Dore the other day describe mm. him. How good is this description of Bernie Sanders? The Andy Richter of politics. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Andy Richter? <laughs> As if that, jo- that joke was specifically designed for Arlen. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I don't, that I'm sums a fan up everything. of Andy Richter too. Yeah, uh, you like him more than Cody. Do you know, I found out. Who's, have you ever seen the it, Andy true. Richter show? He has a show. He used to have a show which got cancelled in like eight episodes after eight episodes. Aww. It was, you know that show? I saw a little bit of it. I'm just going to adjust curious. the camera a bit. It's just, um, it's it's like, you know, um, when you get older, but your brain is still a kid and you need a show too, mm. you've got the Andy Richter show. You're older. I'm talking about retards. I just don't want to say it. Okay, and I We're don't think that we can Carson. say that on Twitch, but okay, okay go. <laughs> but you got it out of me. <laughs> yeah, I did. That was my fault. Well, what's it, like? Uh. That's what I'm saying. Like when you grow up, but your brain is still a child's brain. Why is that the Andy Richter show? Can't because that's what Panther- Andy Richter show was about. Point, we should it say was a like Hello I C U C G or Panthera, whatever you call Panthera, 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 Rock. Um, but it's me. And so I'm gonna extend care. this as well. If you're fucking Sorry. mean to Van Batten or Emma Dawson, if I hear it once. I am dropping another twenty minute video on you. And I've got two yeah. more in the bullet. So I'm just like in the chamber. Yeah, what if are you, you talking about? If A-U-W. you pay to, to fucking Jeremy fucking Poxon and whatever yeah, the fuck else those it, 
I was about to use that word. Name names are yeah. If you pay, you know, I saw footage of Vam. like the head of it just did like a parliamentary r- inquiry or some shit like that. Dude, I just kept thinking the whole time, why is a homeless man in parliament? He looked fucked. Have you been following what? the Bruz uh, inquiry? No. Bruz has been uh, questioned by um, the parliament for pork barreling. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And his response just being like, Bruz, isn't that the point of being in government? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's his response. So good. Why are you and so you know what? He's kind of he right. He ain't round. He's kind of right. Because, look, what? if you are an Italian politician, which is what he is, there is no other point to being in politics True. than to pork barrel. Yeah, it's all who, about, like... Who are the two people you're... Van Batum and what? The, what, what, the chick from Emmett Harry... Dawson. Ha, the chick from Harry Potter. What do you care about her so much? <laughs> ah, for the same reason. Yeah, and how come no one cares about... She's she's <laughs> <hot>. <laughs> Who's Emma? You really that that's uh, Emma Dawson is one of the best uh, economists in the country, and the AUWU just, just spend their entire life just like this, just watching her to just like do the same thing, take her out of context and attack her. But the problem is, she's an economist; she is not a broadcaster, so she can't defend herself. And it's just fucked what they also, do. Also, how do you attack an economist? Like it, it, the recession did not bounce back point one percent; it was point two. <laughs> They're too stupid for that. They don't understand. <laughs> you're talking about the AUWU but here. They're too fucking moronic. You're missing like you the really f- read uh, <laughs> Alex North's pieces in Junkie and you come back and tell me that he's smart enough to even say what you said. Right. <laughs> and you're, what you just said doesn't even make sense. It makes more sense than what they say. <laughs> I'm going to disagree with you on de- her being the best economic manager because clearly the best econ- economic manager is John Howard. Yep. True, very true. <laughs> you, know, do you know how he kept the interest rate low? That's right. And he... Feast on he, that. He knew about Dave Andrews, I'm sure, yeah. before yeah. bloody you did. <laughs> Dave Andrews. He fixed Dave the Murdoch all the ammunition he needs. <laughs> he kept selling coal. Wouldn't it be great if Ali became the campaign manager for <laughs> Dave Andrews? <laughs> Man, I'm still saying Dave Andrews has a career hey, in Dave federal Hinch. politics. Dave Hinch and Dave Andrews. Dave Andrews can be the prime minister. Dave Morrison. <laughs> Dave Morrison. <laughs> Why is that so funny? <laughs> Isn't that the prime minister's name? Huh? Might as well be. He's bloody got. He, he's, he's gone kaput so often you wouldn't know his first name. Am I right? <laughs> Dictator Dave. Whoever wrote that is a legend. <laughs> I just need to get that on record. Yeah, that is fucking hilarious. Na- his name was something and like... so quick off the bat as yeah, well. I just got to commend it. His name was really <laughs> funny too. I forget what it was. But it was something <laughs> very racy. Day. Hey, your opinion on Bernie is not Dave okay. Because fat Dagon Crack said... <laughs> <laughs> that was Dictator Dave. Was it? Yeah. Yes. She says, nah. Fat Dyke on crack is amazing. Fat Dyke on crack is saying very authoritatively, nah, Bernie is funnier than Andy. <laughs> Wait, who's Andy again? I forgot Andy already. Richter. Andy He's Richter. Conan right. sidekick. He's, I'm pretty yeah. sure the doll from Goosebumps... And he just let himself go after the Goosebumps TV Snappy? series went off. What's his name? Tappy? Slappy. 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 <laughs> he is the fucking dog. He is, don't you think? Every time I look work. at him, I'm just like, does Conan O'Brien have a hand up his ass? Yeah. Like, is he just that side character? His like, legs, is, is it a ventriloquist act? Yeah, his legs, <laughs> his legs look inactive. Yeah. Whenever he's sitting on that couch. <laughs> and <laughs> even like the way that he turns they his do. head. He's I swear you could down. get a compilation of this. You, weird. We should get a conspiracy theory going. Is... Andy Richter, a ventriloquist dummy. Even the way that he turns his head, he's got that kind of thing of just being like, yeah, that was a good one, Conan. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turns it back. Yeah. And creepy little eye movements like they do too. Yeah. You're not wrong at all. I'm not wrong. Sometimes Andy has good comebacks. You got to give him that. Yeah, he does. Sometimes. Very rarely. He doesn't deserve millions of dollars a year for those (laughs) comebacks. But Let's be real. He's not getting millions of dollars a year. He's Andy Richter. He's not Conan. What, so you reckon he's getting paid as much as, like, a manager at Centrelink gets paid? Mm, senior manager. <laughs> senior, senior management. Uh, what, 120 kidding? grand a year? Do yeah. You really well, maybe more than that. Cause, like, I reckon he's team. on millions. But also, like, his uh, the, the ratings for Colton Show aren't that great. Because, first of all, really? he's, not on, he's on TBS, which is their <laughs> version of, like, whatever. But it's great for TBS. <laughs> well, he's the biggest star for what TV. What are you, a fucking community organizer in like Orlando? Yes, but it's great for TBS and it'll be even greater if you donate today. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that just sounded like, dude. 
<laughs> Are you from fucking like Florida? <laughs> no anymore. I don't know who I am. Something very shocking happened today. Yeah, yeah. So so here we go. We've got Andy Richards net worth. Thank you. Yo's uh, me taco. Yeah. You owe me taco. Use my taco. Yep. Andy Richards has a net worth of yes. But those are all bullshit. Because oh, you just look shit. at... It seems accurate, dude. This one seems true. accurate. No, it does. That one seems accurate? Yeah. Because I swear to God, you look at it all the time and it's just like, Jeffrey Starth, net worth, $20 million. And it's just like, I'm pretty sure he made that in a month. Oh, well, in that case... Yeah? Well, you, uh, you got, wait, he, they're saying that Andy Richter is worth $10 million. Yeah, I don't buy that for a second. You're Especially you're if you're worth $10 million and you're not a coke addict, which he might be, he does look like he does coke. <laughs> but if he's not... And you have ten million dollars. You don't have ten million dollars. What do you have? Well, you just sit it in the bank. Oh yeah. And you're on like ten million three hundred thousand dollars at the end of the year. Is that how it works, dude? No. Do you want to hear something crazy? That's crazy. Like, well, not that about, much. Talk no. about rich people, right? So I had a little. I had like um, uh, two thousand dollars that I decided that I'm gonna put in shares. This is how fucking... I didn't even know that you rich people it? make... Dude, I did that. Do you know how much profit those shares made? Okay, admittedly, I did some research to look for, like, decent companies. What'd you go... What'd you invest in? In two days, I made $400 on top of that shit. What'd you best invest in? In, like, ZipPay, which I yeah. think is gonna go up. Then shit. I also did this one on um, this lithium uh, mining company shit. in Germany. And, dude, like, I'm telling... If you, I didn't even know that shit was possible. I thought that was just like keeping the money in the bank and then maybe one day you'll make some money. Shit. In two days. That's crazy. And I was like, oh shit, that's how rich people are. Yeah, that's how you do that's it. That's how they fucking make money, dude. Yeah, I just yeah and they just out. leave it there for 20 years and over the wear and tear. Yeah, maybe you'll back. crash and I don't know, but. Well. <laughs> but it's, it's like, Yeah, you really do have that gambler complex at the moment, don't you? Like, <laughs> well, I, I won one hand of blackjack. I'm an expert. No, well, that well, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I'm just saying it's pretty crazy that the share price can go up that quickly and within two days you make $400, dude. That's like it a is, week's pay for most people. It is like it, 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 I'm just saying that whole thing of like, and this is my shitty $2,000. Like when you have $10 million, you can make, no, certainly make a lot more than dude, that. Dude, the only way, the interest, the, the, the interest rates of banks now are like, you'll make 1% a year. It's like a hundred bucks. Don't spend it all on water, salt water taffy. You can only, the only way to make money right now with COVID is stocks. And it's something that, not that I've got a lot of money, but it's something that I want to do. And I'll probably fuck up big time. Like I'll probably just be like everything on blockbuster stocks. And I'll be like, you lost all your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I need someone like you. No, you dude, have no, I no we, like, we do need to figure out this ethical investment portfolio. I'm very interested in that. Yeah. So I'm looking at you. Crack dyke head or whatever actually, your name is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah, every, all you nerds on Twitch, that's right, you're all nerds. Tell us what to invest in and we'll do it blindly. We'll do it right now. Yeah. Um, Having said that, they just said, don't say Nokia. They said buy Bitcoin two years ago and we made fun of them. And yeah. were we right to make fun of them? No. No, we absolutely not, yeah. sir. We would be rich. You know, still, like, well, yeah. still. Then. When when we were well, making fun of friend, it, yeah. when we were making fun of it, yeah. Bitcoin was seventeen thousand dollars, and we thought that was pinnacle. Do you know where Bitcoin is now? Where sixty five thousand dollars? Whoa! One Bitcoin. What the hell's Dogecoin? They knew what was up. We did not. Well, I, I still stand by some of my points of like the problem with Dogecoin. American index fund. What's Dogecoin? Invest. Well, it's Bitcoin. Oh right, right. Invest in love, don't you care. know what? Like I've just done that for the last Fox, ten years Fox. of my life. <laughs> This whole everything on earth will crash at some point. Yeah. And that's why you have to invest in silver. And the only thing that seems <laughs> to have crashed is the price of silver. Silver, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> it went up for the first time since like 22, 2008 last week. Mm -hmm. don't, don't be too Still sure. not enough to cover my losses. <laughs> can it was you, a pretty can big you, can job. Can you tell us like how you invested in silver? Like what yeah, tell made us, you tell us, that? tell us. So stupid. Uh, you know why? You know what it was? You know that period of our lives, Ali, when we were obsessed with Fox News? Mm. I was watching that and I got to the point. This was at the peak of my <laughs> obsession with Fox News. Invest in Dave Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd be the only one to do that. <laughs> well, 
You don't have to tell us that. Of course, like as soon as we find out who Dave Andrews is, <laughs> I'm just going to give you my life savings and be like, I expect a return on this, <laughs> Mr. Andrews. Because your name's Dave Andrews. <laughs> Sorry, continue. <laughs> <laughs> invest in Mortine? Yeah, is, I do. Don't tennis worry. shop. What? If someone said invest in Mortine, and I do, but not on no, stocks. No, you don't. Dude, Lewis, you, you, you bought, you sold out of, uh, you, you sold right, your shares Coles. in Mortine. I got Coles, right? Did you get Coles? Wait. I thought that you got some German thing just being like, cockroach and douche. I haven't bought it yet. Right. But the thing is that, uh, <laughs> like, okay, so he invested in German lithium. You invested <laughs> in German roach kill. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Well, we're, we're, anyway. It's very, dude, how good is just replacing the word purchase with invest. (laughs) (laughs) I invested in a croissant. Read Mr. Big Big Willy 23, that one there. Mr. Big Willy 23. You better be bringing the yuck yucks. What? What, what, Invest in Jesse Sells' alcohol head. (laughs) Brutal. And then Kevin's a soy boy. He's so many legends. Uh, Okay, so (laughs) Ban Mole suggests that we invest in Bitslove. (laughs) <laughs> I got your investing right here uh, and, and, and Kevin's a soy boy Suggests that Miss Love specifically Invests in Ashley and Martin <laughs> <laughs> uh, Give the phone back Give the phone back uh, Zingers Zingers left well, you, you need to tell us your silver story also, people are saying that silver is probably the highest it will ever be sell right now. No, I'm not doing it. No, no, I'm holding out. No, I'm telling you, you this is my right personal now. Bitcoin. You should sell now. <laughs> Dude, it's the highest silver has been there for ages. Just Jeez. saying, it's not a new metal. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think it's going to be the I'm next sure Bitcoin, silver. I feel yeah. like, 18, eight, like 10, uh, 1805 might have been the peak for silver. Yeah, the only uh, way that you could ever make money in silver is if you inherit your grandma's silverware when she dies. Which means you didn't pay a cent on that silver and then you could melt it down and make like 17 bucks. Yeah, exactly. Well, why did you invest in silver? Because, yeah, like I was saying, uh, at the peak of our interest in Fox News, I got to the point that I was so addicted to it. I think I was 19 at the time. that I would watch Hannity and Combs. (laughs) Then I'd watch O'Reilly Factor, obviously the dream team. (laughs) But then... I got to, like, this is when you know that you were, like, getting really down the rabbit hole. You'd sit there for On the Record with Greta Van Susteren. So, like, their crap CNN cover to just be like, no, no, we've got down the line reporters. You just watch her just being like, "Eh, I think I've got a stroke and I just haven't heard from anybody's hair. You sit there for an hour and I watch that. And then it'd come back. And then it'd just be like a repeat of Hannity and Combs. And I was just like, no, I can't watch this, but I, I, I need more. I need more. Mm. And you know what I found out? It was something called Fox Business. Oh, I've seen that, yeah. Did you, were you into that? And well, now I'm it just has like it. this British guy there that you assume was one of the characters in um, uh, like Oliver Twist or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you know that guy? Yeah, yeah, disabled one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I know, I know. I'm perfectly aware, but I never took their advice. <laughs> no, I, but I'm well, aware not his. I'm not an idiot. I took yeah. Neil Cavuto's advice, <sighs> and Neil Cavuto. Uh, I don't know. He's either Newman's cousin from Seinfeld, <laughs> or he's like uh, the the dad from Home Alone, and he's let himself go. There's one of those two. <laughs> And the point is that he was just sitting there just being like, I'm telling you, silver is my... And then just put on that Simpsons thing of being like, shoo-in of the week. <laughs> and then I was like, bullshit. And then I just went to CNBC and CNBC was sitting there going, silver prices are surging and we expect them to peak at around the price of $100 US per gallon. And then we went to... And then I was just like, this is bullshit. And then I just went to Sky News UK and was like, I'm telling you, I have never seen a surge in silver prices <laughs> like this. You would be absolutely mad not to flip your gold into silver. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was the original GameStop. He was, you were, you were I was shorted. Fund. Yeah. I was shorted. Yeah, I was totally, that's, but then you just figure out, you know what all of these investing channels are? They're just for schmucks like me. The whole point of these, these are not for businessmen. I thought that I was just on the insider because no. I had Foxtel and I like, <laughs> you know, I assumed that like, you know, the, the CEO of the NRL has Foxtel. Yeah. So I thought it was for rich people. 
<laughs> but it is just for bogans to sit there and just be like, oh, I don't want to look into this at all. You just do the thinking for me. And all they do is channel you into buying shit shares and then short the stock. Yeah. And you're the one that's just left out on the coal. Yeah. That's what those... So the whole... I swear the whole thing is just a setup. It is. I think it is. I mean, is that, would that be right? Well, I think maybe they're not shorting it, but maybe what's happening is that they're getting uh, people that Inside are sending them tips being like, hey... Inside um, trading, yeah. You sh- silver s- is probably going to go up. And uh, if you plug it on your millions of audience channel, uh, maybe you'll get an early payout for that. You reckon? Yeah. I think like companies... Or do you think that they just like some billionaire just sets it up and says, yeah, just uh, we'll, we'll make silver artificially go up this week. And they're just totally like, yes, Mr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they trade, artificially... Dude. That's a really common practice where these big wigs, because they, the, they have the power to drive up prices... They drive up prices, then suckers like us who are like, oh my God, uh, this particular thing is going off the roof. And then you start investing in it. And then when they realize that, okay, the average man is now investing in it, they sell it immediately and make a killing out of it. A it's very textbook way of doing it. You know what? Like, Because my only other piece of advice came from a self-help book and it was J.D. Rockefeller was getting his shoes shined <laughs> by a shoe shine boy. And then he was just like, you boy, what's that? And then took out of his back pocket yeah. some shares in like Steel America or something and he was just like oh, let's start investing for the future me lord and then JD Rockefeller just thought that's it alright I'm selling all of my shares and then the next week like the great stock market crash of 1929 happened what a cunt and so he just realised if shoeshine boys have shares in Steel America yeah. I shouldn't have any shares yeah. <laughs> and I was the shoeshine boy yeah. I was the shoeshine boy in the GFC because yeah. a couple of weeks later, what happened? Global financial crisis. That was one of the last little pieces. Wow. But you've been, but Silver's hit a, an all-time high, for highest in a decade. So why don't you pull out now? Because mine was the all-time high in history. And the reason that it's the all-time high in a decade is because I bought it at the last all-time high. <laughs> <laughs> I think I bought Cut silver at the highest point uh, in human history. Uh, it's never been more expensive. Even when there was like silver shortages in ancient Rome because they lost their silver mines in a Hispanic revolt. So there just wasn't any silver. It was cheaper then. <laughs> I bought it. You could not get it. Isn't that incredible? Well, you win some, you lose some. Luckily, you also have a media empire. <laughs> so. That and works. there was all these like little crap justifications they gave. I do remember them saying um, stuff like, I'm telling you, because then I started watching because I was just like, I'm going to go to the real source. Some lib in the western suburbs that has a YouTube channel with about mm, 800 views. And I was watching that guy and he just called himself like Mr. Gold or some <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> I wonder if he's still around. Mr. But that was all of his shtick. He was one of the early Australian YouTubers up there with your Nat Trans and your Nat's what I reckoned. I assume that his name was Nathaniel as well. And uh, he just sat there saying over and over, you should the gold, bros, gold, best investment ever. There's nothing better than gold. You know that phrase, good as gold? They say that for a reason, speech. <laughs> and then... And then he was just like, that's it, I'm flipping all this shit into silver. And, ev- and even when the price went down, he was just like, don't worry, don't worry, this is just a slight dip. It's going to go back up again. I'll tell you why. Ten years from now, there won't be no more silvers. They're running out of silver, so you should just hold on to that shit. And that, I've just realised, was the advice that I was following for the last ten years. But, like, Mr. Gold, it's been ten years. <laughs> <laughs> And also, how accredited are your credentials, Mr. Gold? <laughs> Mr. Gold. Wh- His name's Mr. Gold. But why did well, you, what you want? It's self-appointed, Like they dude. say, Jordan, that was your it's fault. Degree. Self-appointed. You don't do as they say, you do as they do. If his name's Mr. Gold, there's a cue there. Yeah, okay. All right. Sure. So he didn't He didn't flip all of his gold. I, I think, yeah, that was what he was... It was... What a stupid investment strategy. I... Now that I've read one investment book, but it was Tony Robbins, and he just gets all of the best investors on earth to sit around and tell him all of their strategies. Yeah. Every single investment portfolio that he went through was just like, I don't know, Bullets. 40% bonds, 30% foreign stocks, 12% actual stocks in America. What are bonds? Just the government promising money, basically. And, right. Um, 
<laughs> they're a really good uh, stable source of. Uh, oh. it, but it's like one up money. from just leaving your money in the yeah, bank. Yeah, it's basically. Leaving oh, your money in the I bank. see. Uh, Can you do that in Australia? Invest in Koshi is the advice. <laughs> well, Koshi beers. <laughs> Koshi Isn't it not- amazing that daily he uploads 40 minutes of gold and there's like 20 people that watch it and I'm one of them. Don't lie, you're not. Koshi should, should, we, should we read from... Uh, that'll be on the pod. We'll do it on the pod. We'll read from the Bible. The Bible. Join on Patreon Actually, if you we're want. half an hour, uh, so we should probably... Do uh, go for a quick break and then come back with the main pod. Okay, let's do that. We were gonna ask you questions, but uh, like always, no, we, we ran out of time. Kept talking about crap, so we'll see you guys <laughs> for some more crap after the break. <laughs> crap. Yes, yes. Welcome to the friendly Geordie's podcast, where we were discussing if uh, spam is worse than corned beef, and we <laughs> came to the conclusion that they're both pretty bad. Yeah. Can review. What do you think about it, guys? Uh, yeah, now, yeah, now, now we're uh, even putting into the main podcast just us yeah. flailing ideas at you. Yeah. <laughs> nah, let's let's not do that. Let's not do that. Well, um, look, what we actually will do is give you a preview to a video that's coming up soon because we have a lot that has happened recently. Yeah, big that day. It's just been. This is just turning into Warhammer two point Yeah, but you know what? I will say this, and so I think that Miss Love will disagree. But I honestly think that this is more fucked than Warhammer. I do disagree. <laughs> <laughs> and let me just tell you how bad Miss Love's opinion of Warhammer is <laughs> if he thinks that this is slightly less worse than Warhammer. I'm going to shoot, shoot, shoot from the hip. I don't know where we go from here, but pretty much we are making, I think the feat, the, the, the creme de la creme of friendly Geordies yeah. is the vlog that we have been filming over the last two days. It has turned into an ordeal. You know what it was as well? This is the really ironic part about all of it. We were trying to make the first fast food in human history. After Mm. releasing that British video on Monday, Yeah, we just realised everybody in the comments is talking about Jelly Deal. It just took off by itself. It was a meme in itself. And Miss and I, I'm telling you, this is the phrase that we both came to. Because I rang up Miss. This actually happened. I rang him up at like 1 a.m. at night after like falling asleep and then just woke up and like, Jelly, Jelly Deal. (laughs) Miss, we're going to have to make Jelly Deal. And then he was just at the same time waking up and like, I was just about to call you and say the exact same thing. (laughs) It actually actually happened. He's like, I can't stop thinking about it. I'm like, me neither, man. What the fuck is going on? Can we give them a little bit of a taser? Because it's in the fridge. I think I think we can. I think we, I can. think we can because we got a lot of uh, so scary. Yeah, we got a lot of uh, sort of attention. Well, from it, the video. well, you gotta like first. Oh, it's so much. Worse. It looks horrible, dude. It, <laughs> it looks, looks horrible. So much worse because of the. Are you gonna show oh. them? Oh. <laughs> You're gonna show them. I uh, get focused in on that. Which, this is which a preview. Yeah. Here's a little preview for you all. Look at this. It's called Jelly Ayo. I don't know if you know, it's not supposed to be brown. <laughs> I don't know if they can hear you, but he's saying it's not saying supposed it. to be brown. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Look at it. it, it, it put so much spice on it. Spinning in spice. I know, I put too much spice. Well, I, I fucked look, up the spice. Uh, for, personally, for me, more spice is better than less spice. I put way too much spice. Ali, oh, skip that. What do you reckon? What's the first thing that Jeez, you Jeez, that does look smell fucked. Like? I don't smell it. Does it smell like a lake? What I'll say is, yeah, this is what we noticed. This smells like a lake. I'm pretty sure that the reason that lakes have their smell is because of eels. Dude, Dude, I don't smell shit. Ugh, smells earthy. Well, are we having it or what? No, no, we're not having it. Oh, I think uh, no, we should. It said leave it overnight, but also, not only did I put too much spice, I think I, I think we put too much gelatin, so it's going to be like, mmm, rock hard jelly. Really? I is that what so. happens? It looks like so. it. What's everyone saying in the comments? They're saying... Yuck. Uh, <laughs> Scuff supper. Throw it, it in the like bin. Uh, ha- you have to eat it by a whale lamp. Agreed. That's true. Tell us something we don't know. Breakfast of laws. Invest in jelly deal. Fuck, is that a rotting, rotting corpse? Pretty much. Yep, that's all true. <laughs> uh, all right. Okay. Um, you know what's do fucked you as well? Tell- this this says so much about Britain. Jellied eel is their version of wheat beaks. That's where they <laughs> no, get their energy their from. No, it's their version of Vegemite. Uh, do you know how like, we kind uh, of accept that? Yeah, true. 
True. They they know that it's not good. You know what I also found out about it? You know why jelly deal is a thing? Yeah. Well, I, I know all about it. Okay, give me the history them. of jelly they, deal. Because they pull And also, them. just let us know in the comments, would you be interested in a history of jelly deal? Because I am. <laughs> and I just want an excuse I, to I'm not. Do it. And I've seen it today. It's it, not that interesting. Really? really? <laughs> hey, speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. Miss Love is obsessed yeah. As soon as I came, which was early today, he's just been watching Jelly Deal videos. Yeah, I and I know so. so much about it already. Yeah, yeah. I can give you a history they, lesson as well. Yeah, they pulled yeah. them out of the Thames and served them at markets, and the, they they have a natural Thames. they have a natural gelatin. So that of course, being then they were like, oh yeah, well food, there's no other alternative other than to boil it, is there? And if someone's like fried, they're like burn them at the stake. <laughs> That's when we use fire, you know. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> So basically, they <laughs> boiled them and it naturally created like a natural jelly. They just, they just threw eels in a pot and then it turned to jelly. And they're like, whatever, here you go, one pittance. And they and they liked it so much that River Thames does not have eels anymore. They, 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 they ate all the eels out of the Thames. Can you imagine like something that tastes that bad? I'm guessing. I we haven't, haven't tried, tried it. But yet. let's be real. It would be bad. Um, yeah. They overfished that. Like, how desperate do you need to be? But the other thing is there probably isn't because, look, I would imagine that eels can put up with really extreme conditions, I, I, but not yeah. as extreme as the Thames. The Thames <laughs> is the Ganges, but you know how the Ganges no. is like, it has the magic of life in it, but the Thames does not have the magic of life. <laughs> but you know what? You know what's weird? I was watching, I was watching Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, that's my point. It's no magical yeah, it's properties, point. just a, filthy. This is <laughs> <laughs> it's incorrect, yeah. No, but you know what? Apparently it started because I can't remember. It was just like something along the lines of the, the king or whatever was just like taking some kind of uh, swim or something in the Thames and being like, what's this? Eh? One of them sea snakes <laughs> slithered past me leg. That's bad look, it is. <laughs> and then he demanded, by decree of the king, that ye start eating eels to get rid of the dangerous surplus of eels in the Thames. <laughs> Apparently there was just an excess of eels. That's why they started eating it. So they were just like, oh. commoners, fill your gob with fat. Oh. Like, yeah, watch me, Lord. Jellied. Oh. Mm. oh. <laughs> Mmm, <laughs> bony. Uh, so it's like Cooked in bone too. That's we've crazy. got one of those too, isn't there? Like, what's that fish that we that is highly in, uh, is encouraged to overfish? Um, the oh, like the carp. carp. The carp, yeah. The carp. Oh. carp in the darling, but is yeah. that that's interesting? But you can't eat that. You can you just use that as fertilizer. No, but you can eat it. What? No, I don't think you can. Dude, you go to any uh, Asian supermarket, they've got it. Really? People eat carp. it. No, you can't yeah. eat carp. I'm pretty dude. sure carp is just ugly dude, koi. Do you know, like in Europe, we what we have in the Murray Darling uh, is uh, the European carp, not the Asian one. In Europe, it's like any other fish. They really? like it. Is that right? Okay, well, that just shows another reason why I'm really glad that I'm not French. I really don't want to be eating More carp. than you know. More than you know. Yeah. <laughs> the Americans have uh, Asian carp uh, infested in their waters. Yes, yes. Ameri oh, that's, that's their fuck. cane toads. Yeah, yeah, really? Cane yeah. Toads. Well, actually, it's just their carp. But they like catfish. <laughs> is, that, is that like a cousin of the carp? Well, in the way no, that catfish the snapper is, not is a the cousin, cousin of, of a carp. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Catfish. catfish is like catfish is whatever they're swamp fish, right? They don't they don't mind catfish, but carp is just exploding in population and really? it's taking over. But you can't. I think eat it's it. taken over like Lake Michigan. And when we talk Whoa. about like U.S. Uh, water bodies, they are s the size of like countries. They're huge. Yeah, they are. I don't understand why they don't just chuck herpes at him. They should do the same thing in the Darling. Well, they're doing the same thing. And they the should stop thing. stealing water from it, but yeah. Have you heard yeah. about there apparently there's a proposal to in, in Australia in the Murray Darling, there's a proposal to like introduce a particular virus no. that only yeah, yeah. affects... Yeah, yeah. The, but Can't because they kill all the biomass. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know if that's a good idea. No, it's not. I think it is just, really just good. Just overfish them, man. Like you can't, can't overfish it. Well, look, I'll, I'll take as I much carb. Like, I'll make it into dog food. Are they introduced? Yeah. Yeah, they why? Were why? Yeah, they they're called European. You know what? Why you know they, why? they were introduced because some Europeans in early uh, days came here and they were like, "I miss fishing the European carp." Oh, for fuck! So they just like uh, put in a few so they could fish, and no. they, yeah, just completely. Dude, I watched it. Almost as fucked as Jelly Deal. <laughs> I watched a documentary on cane toads, and don't know if you guys know this, but they're a big problem too. <laughs> Did that documentary have 
some toothless hick singing at the end. Kane told you, Kumi. Kane told you, Kumi. It had toothless, tooth, toothless hicks throughout, being like, yeah, they're everywhere. They're in the bajongas and the malarkeys. Oh, okay. So you voices. just watched the Australian Simpsons episode? No, <laughs> I watched. I really did watch a documentary. <laughs> hey, Simpsons is a documentary. It is a good more, documentary. That is a documentary. It of predicts Australia. so much shit. Michael Moore oh, reviewed. They're right. That is our flag. Hmm? Michael Moore reviewed it. The doco. It was good. It was very yeah. alarming. <laughs> very, very alarming. Okay. Anyway, um, do you want to miss what we should do? Is we want to move on to like some of the heady shit, but what I before we jellied do that, eel. I want to hear the jelly eel story real quick. Like uh, what happened Jordan, today? You, you say it. This is just a preview. For well, all look, you. we started. We thought because it was supposed to be the first fast food ever made, we thought it might be a little bit slower than McDonald's. Ah. But I think McDonald's on average takes about three minutes to serve. <laughs> Ours takes. Three days. It'll be three right. days that we have gone to the lengths of trying something that we know is going to taste bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, well, I think I fucked it up, so I think that's why it's going to be bad, but we'll see. I think it'll be bad because it's boiled eel that is gelatinated in its own juices. I think that might okay. have something okay. to do it's with it. It's not even... He put extra gelatin in there. You're yeah, and to. he put extra to. spices in there. If anything, you improved the recipe. Yeah, true. Yeah, dude, the true. spices, trust me, are going to be good. True. Like that, that's what's going to save that thing. I put too much. Don't hate on spices. But so what happened today? Well, because Jordan was freaked. Jordan called me this afternoon because he was freaking out. Yeah. Why were you freaking out, Jordan? Well, look, we went to the fish markets thinking that you could just buy a filleted eel there, surely. Yeah. Because we assumed it was seafood, forgetting that the Thames is not ocean. And so... That's right. I don't know. They all looked at us strangely when we went to the fish markets and they were just like, what, freshwater fish? You're going to ask for a unicorn next (laughs) year. And so they didn't have any freshwater stuff there at all. And I get upset when I see the crabs that are bound in their little uh, nips or whatever. Anyway, we came across one guy that was a fan. He was just like, no way. You're Maz. Bruss, bruss, come here. I know where to get it. But you're not going to lie. He's not it. lying, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. And he tells Miss about this he gives me a secret card. wet market. Yeah. That's just basically next to his house. Of course it would be. There's going to be... Look, if <laughs> it's you next live to my in, house. It yeah. is next to your house. It's just right next to the brothel. Wet market. <laughs> <laughs> of course... Of course, if you are going to be able to buy freshwater eel somewhere in Australia, it's going to have to be the most resembled, like ba- basically just a replica of East End London, which yeah. is St. Peter's. Yeah, which is like the arse end of industrial St. Peter's. The closest thing to water there is the arse end of that fucking river that runs near the airport, you know? Not much living in there. So you so you go to the... He went to the wet markets. Oh, yeah, I went alone. I get, a, I get a message first thing in the morning. Go on. First thing in the morning, I, I'm, I'm drying out my eyes and then... You just get this message from Miss Love going, fuck, it's alive. And I was just like, what? And then he said, the eel. And then I was like, Jesus Christ. And then I rang up and said, don't buy it. For the love of God, don't buy it. And then Miss Love was just saying, like, too late, too late. I already haggled with the Chinese lady and got a great price. <laughs> That's true, that happened. <laughs> how, she how, already much was it? It. how much was it? It was cheap. It was like twenty two fifty. Well, that's not cheap. For Isn't one it? eel. Well, I suppose that is pretty expensive. But you it, guys but are making some dough. But it, it makes sense if he says that. What do you mean twenty two fifty, dude? Fish? Oh, because like it, no, you're I, right. I'm guessing that there's very dude, low no, demand no, for you know, them. No, you know what? You're right. It's not expensive, <laughs> but like I was buying a prehistoric fish uh, lake reptile. Like to me, I was like, it was like the next level of like the ultimate fucking. Oh, you thought you were like ten thousand dollars? Yeah, for, like, uh, for me it was just half like, an egg. For me it was like the ultimate aquarium. You grab the sea lizard and kill it yourself. Like I thought it was gonna be like a hundred bucks as it was such a bizarre experience. I was like, wait, have you guys like, it was so weird. Never, it just like is walked f- into Vietnam. Yeah. Th- that was their embassy. I'm sure that that is the yeah. Vietnamese embassy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just this scary sea market. No, they were definitely Chinese. So, and what was it? Just oh, wrapped yeah. up in like a plastic bag? It was fucked, dude. There was, and also there just was, like, yeah. how s- it just shows you how industrial this is. He was, Miss I've described it as quote, the world's saddest aquarium. It's just <laughs> stacks of live animals sitting there just like hoping for death. Yes. And he just walks in and says, do you guys have eels? And her response is like, how many you want? 100? Yeah. <laughs> and there was a plastic bag. There was a plastic bag just filled with eels. Just just in solitary confinement going like, 
And what was the plastic bag had like holes in it and shit for no. breathing? No. So what was it? It was closed. Yeah. Like what? Uh, elastic band. Jesus. So there was like a massive plastic bag that was filled with eels. Yes. Closed with an no holes. Whoa! Yeah. In, in 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 Australia? In fucking next to my house, basically. Wow! And then like a, a tank. I just that fucking was f- became Owen Wilson. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> tank, That's all you could say. Like, like tanks full of lobsters. Like lobsters. Like how much? How much? Actually, lobster, how much? Like this many lobsters? How much? How much with the lobster? How much? I didn't ask. Oh, they probably were cheap. Right. We'll go they back. Probably we'll go back. Cheap. Yeah, but be. cheap is still 80 bucks. Yeah, but like oh. th- this many lobsters stacked on top of each other. Imagine the one in the middle just sort of like, eh, it's going to get worse for it gets better. <laughs> and just like, <laughs> like crabs. <laughs> just, it was just <laughs> fucked. It was just fucked. Well, how- well, but anyway, the crabs are also in like plastic bags. No, those. What's those up with plastic bags? Why can't you just keep like a box of ice or something? I don't know. It was a plastic bag. It was just fucked, and like I was just like, Ugh. it was scary, and I'm like, I wonder if they. It and was it was scary for you. Yeah. And he's Eastern European, so when he went to the fish markets, and the fish markets is upsetting enough for me, but when he goes yeah, in right. there, right. and I'm just <laughs> looking at all of these sad yabbies in like a tray just thinking about how many i can purchase with my life savings to just chuck in the fucking sell that silver buy yabbies park. yeah that <laughs> invest in yabbies that's yeah, what i was going to do yeah and he's just like picking them out of there being like yay look at this one very good and then just chucking them back in so he's well, fine gonna- in that environment like he looked at home in the fish markets and everyone in the fish markets looks like uh you know those men that lived in that town that is really close to where the dragon lives in The Hobbit, then they just look (laughs) extra medieval, like way more medieval than they would have looked in the Middle Ages. Like everyone in the fish markets looks like that, except for there's more Chinese faces. Uh, That's pretty much the place. Mislav looked at home in the fish markets. And he was was scared of the wet markets. Yeah, yeah. Jordan was explaining it because I was just like, come down here. This is because I know that place pretty well. And I was like, yeah. And then Jordan's like, how are you? How do you know the ins and outs of this operation? Like you are, like, like, do you work here too? Yeah. Like, it's bizarre. Well, the, like, look, I I'm very at home at fish markets and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah I can but, imagine. But like that plastic bag's a bit much, man. It was like, much. That's not. <laughs> that's not <laughs> and, and, and I asked him. I said, like, listen, can you? Do you have any that are like dead already? And she looked at me like I was an idiot. Like she was just like, huh? How many? And I was like, uh, <laughs> one. One, one, just one, just one. And then, she put, and then she gave me my own little plastic bag and she put my friend in there and it was really weird. But then basically I came here and I knew what had to be done and Jordan just disappeared out of sight. He bought me like a samurai sword to do the job with, but it's been a full on day. Like I won't, I won't go into extreme Was detail. this the first time you actually you like slaughtered something? I think apart from a fish, this is the first time I slaughtered something. This felt more intense because it's it's a giant snake yeah. you know what else was really weird just seeing miss love evolve from a child because that's all i've ever seen <laughs> just 15 years of being 10 <laughs> mm-hmm. and he just evolved in that second from a 10 year old to a 50 year old man while i was just in the corner going maybe we can buy an aquarium and just put him in there and then he was just like what mate if you put this in the lake here, it's from Tasmania. It's not going to live. This is the most humane thing. Just put him in the esky. I'll slice his head off. I should want that death. That's a good death. It was. He was so mature about it. It was He's so not weird. He's not wrong. Well, he was yeah. definitely right because I was just going through every scenario. Every and he was just logically like an adult going through all of them saying, <laughs> dude, put that on ice. Yeah. That's the way funny? to go. Eel yeah. is like a very advanced level to slaughter for the first time in your life because yeah. eels are like reptiles. They, they, they have reptiles. that same thing of, you know how lizards can like grow limbs and shit? Yeah. So you can chop off an eel's head and it will still keep moving for ages. Yeah, dude. As we found out. As we found out. Yeah. I mean, I had it on ice for a long time. It was bizarre because I, should I say, or is this like giving too much away? No, well, this is not the part that we're going to show. Yeah, yeah, True. I mean, it's ba- it was basically just like get chopping the head off was like fine. I was like, see you, mate. And then even gutting it, all good. But then I chopped it in half and sort of cleaned it. And because I took it from the an icy environment, which is like sub zero to, you know, cold water, which is warm in comparison, the dystrophy or atrophy, dystrophy, atrophy. Anyway, the nerves started to go crazy. The fillets became possessed. 
Wow, the yeah. fillets were alive. And Sorry, I just I just have to put this in. <laughs> Dome King, as usual, coming up with the cooks. Re Miss Love. <laughs> this is basically like what he'll just be saying on his deathbed. It'll just be him on a roof while it's raining, looking up with his face that does look a lot like the uh, replicant boss in Blade Runner. Just <laughs> rain, t- like jerking down his face, just being like, I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Tanks. Full of lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> I watched eels slither around in a giant bag. <laughs> <laughs> Little chunks of eels moving even once they've been chopped up on a rice bed. Well, you know what? Eels, eels can move even after they're cooked. Like, they go come out on, like, a d- plate or a dish, and they'll be moving slightly. Yeah, well, wow. I ch- well, then I fucking chopped it into pieces following old Terry's fucking recipe of eel pie with a liquor, yeah, on East, the East End of London. And the fucking chunks were moving. I didn't realise <laughs> this has changed. It's, it's definitely scary. changed my perspective of, like, killing and, like, eating meat. Because I asked Ali, and Ali was like, yeah, man, I mean, you can say it, but he, he was like, I killed a goat and we fucking chopped it up. And, and he said they skinned the leg and the leg was there. And then Ali was sitting there and the leg post mortem started going, doof, doof, after. I have seen, I have seen with my own eyes, and I'm not kidding, a, people have seen headless chickens walk. Yes. I've seen, it was, it was brutal. And like, look, you've got to take it sometimes. PSA in life. for any I vegans. have seen a, uh, a cow. Half of its head no, was, no. and it was running. No, no. no. But that's usually that, that's actually different. That's because like whoever was doing it was a fucking moron and didn't know how to like actually slaughter a cow. But that sort of stuff, that those are nerves. Like They're the, just the, nerves. the, the, They're just the nerves. thing is dead. But it does. Give but you I saw. I as a kid, I remember like the, one of the first times I'd seen that shit get slaughtered, and then they were just skinning it like an hour after the deed had been done. There was just a leg of that goat on. Uh, like one of the chopping boards, and I saw the leg twitching, and I think I was ten, and I freaked out. I was like, I thought it was like a horror movie. It was like, hey guys, it's <laughs> bad. hey guys, <laughs> hey 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 hey, this one's still. Oh my god! I thought we were gonna like now run, abandon the yeah, house, things yeah. are like this is gonna be a horror movie. <laughs> well, because I wait was is Sandy just sitting. Vegetarian? Huh? No. Oh, she's a, she doesn't like Sandy. Enjoy. It gets worse. Keep going. Because <laughs> I just heard from the. I, I like I was just waiting outside there with the music up, and then my girlfriend rocked up. Thank God she helped. Yeah, yeah, because Miss was sitting there just saying it, it's a bit weird me sitting there, and I was just like, okay, wait, 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 I'll just put like my eyes over like this, and then I'll just try and film it on a tripod or something. Yeah, I was trying to nerve my way up. Fortunately, my girlfriend came. And she's Vietnamese, so that's just instinct to her. Yeah. Like if she she probably just would have walked in there and just been like, "This is still moving." <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, this is a boy. <laughs> Seriously. And uh, <laughs> so I was just sitting out there. I, I then I was just talking to Christo on the phone, and this African dude that was just in the <laughs> lift, Friend of Miss mine. Love just comes out and is like, "What are you doing? You're missing out on all the action." And he's just like, "Hang on." TK and then TK turns around like Miss Love. There's <laughs> <laughs> my complete chance. My life is weird, dude. It's so dude, strange. On our floor. A guy I used to work with 10 years ago in a Mexican bar. He's just like, hey, man. I was like, hey, dude. Wait, what's he doing here? So he's strange. Been, His he's friend living. lives here. Oh, okay. And then they just come into the apartment. I'm out. <laughs> and so there's just. A strange African man, my Vietnamese girl, and a slav in there with just an apron being like, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting like, like in a fetal position. I couldn't move. I was so <laughs> upset. <laughs> just with a, I'm holding a Japanese samurai sword basically. They're like, come on, man, let's fucking do this. Yeah, I know. It was amazing. It was so everyone around me is an adult except me. And then... Uh, I hear from the outside, you know, in the road, there's that scene where they're putting all of the people in that cellar and then they try and get out. And then while they're running away, you can just hear this like, ah, fuck, shit, god damn it. Because they're having to slaughter everyone because they're trying to escape to get them meat. Yeah. That's pretty much what I was hearing from there, <laughs> from the outside. You just hear this, just this kind of like sound. You could hear it of the... That sound, and then there's a pause, and then you hear Miss Love just go, fuck, fuck, 
And then you hear my girlfriend go, ah! And then there's a pause and then you hear, jacket on ice, jacket on ice. I don't know what's going on. And then it stops. And then I hear my <laughs> Vietnamese girlfriend use the classic, who's, who's that Indian comedian that everyone likes? Russell Peters. Russell Peters. Say the classic thing. There's another pause and then she just says, be a man. <laughs> <laughs> a Vietnamese cheats kitchen like if you are going to get it I will yeah. Yeah. and then he just comes in and then just does the belly yeah. thank just god she was there yeah. isn't it incredible like yeah. I cannot get no. over the fact that you did it no I did the belly first that was all fine it's when ah. the fucking pieces started just becoming is that what the screaming again. was that was where I was like what the fuck it's, it, it was moving back for revenge it was moving like fully so I put it back on ice and then I was like oh it's still moving and then I was like look should I just man up and fucking just just do it? And she's like, yeah. And then she was like, be a man. I'm like, she's right. And then just took the moving ear. I was like, <laughs> just no. a tiny little piece. Oh, this is very but I will say this though, Miss Love did all the research. I did. Uh, he it was a clean cut. It was totally clean, and it was it didn't feel any pain. I can tell you that it was gone. I've. And I just have to say, Miss Love has the strangest job on earth. <laughs> One day it'll just be like, okay, I want you to do a script about Aussie Dads. Just give us a bunch of observations about Sting. All right, now I want you to go to a wet market and kill an eel. All right. It's usually one or the other, right? You, it's you either a video on over. Dave <laughs> Andrews or a video on eels. <laughs> and my poor mate, my poor African mate was just like, mm, yeah, it's nice to be back in. He's just like, yeah, Australia. And it's like, what are you doing? Like, T- two sort of just standing there not talking I'm there with like a knife and like blood on my hands I'm like I'm about to kill a knee and he's just and he's like what the fuck I'm like you want to help me do it he's like ah, ah, get out of here <laughs> and John's sitting outside the field he's like it's going to be dead soon it's going to be dead soon <laughs> so good you know what but yeah something is Dan just Dan says you guys are living the dream <laughs> Yeah, or the nightmare nah like it, I, one of the top comments of all time on Friendly Geordies was uh this has to be the most diverse content channel on earth. So and I think we've wrong. proved it right. I think we've proved <laughs> it. Really it really has. Yeah, yeah. All like, right, well, the on one. that note, then we'll <sighs> move on to one substantive thing. Jordan, yeah, I actually yeah. want to get your opinion on this. So the last uh, podcast that we did, Miss. Yeah. Uh, it actually, uh, we got uh, good reviews. Yep. By that means, Google said that this video is doing slightly better than the rest <laughs> of the videos. Yeah. But one of the most liked uh, comments on that video was when we were talking about uh, on the last podcast how Albanese's strategy differs from Bill Shorten's strategy. Yeah. One guy commented, which is the top comment on the video, saying, I hate it when... Actually, I'll just read it just out. Read it. I'll yeah, just yeah. read it out now. because And I wanted to get Jordan's take on it mm-hmm. because uh, it seemed to be... Can I, while you're looking that up, can I just make a really funny point, Jordan, before you go? How good is this? Look, come, come from my angle, and it's just like two of the greatest oh thinkers my of our God. time. With that classic epic shot of half of your face. <laughs> and this time, it's personal. <laughs> the battle for Gaul and uh. the battle for Gordo's heart. All right, uh, Ali, you have to pay that. I, 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 hey, I put <laughs> no, it up. Why'd you turn it around? Sorry. Look, 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 hey, look. I did the decor. You think I don't read? Look at them. Two of our greats. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Oh, that's so perfect. Good. Um, all right, uh, Jordan. Yeah. I need you to like actually. So the most light comment on our last video was, I'm finding it pretty irritating that the people crying about Jordan's method are the same ones who are crying about Albanese's method. Mm. I just want LNP gone. Agree. Let me live the dream. The LNP coalition to crumble pieces. What do you... Uh, what Shout do you, him out. What What's do you the think name? about like, is there... Oh, his name is uh, Francis. Oh, it's sorry. It's a, it's a lady. Her name is Francis Powell. Yeah, I agree with that. Or name like that. There's confusion. Um, But what do you think about that? You know what? We were just discussing this. We're doing a video on it now. We noticed that one of the primary tactics that the press uses is whoever is in power or, you know, the leader of the Labor Party at the very least. The press will always do this. 
when Kevin Rudd was in power. Oh, Julia Gillard, she's very popular. Look at her go. She's getting, oh, she's outranking Kevin Rudd. Look at that. Who'd have guessed she would when we're giving her constant positive press? I think you should, <laughs> you should do a leadership spill there. And, oh, she did it. What a backstabber. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Look, uh, Ke- Kevin Rudd, get back in there. Get, reclaim your honour. What are you doing? You, you, look, you're more popular than Julia Gillard is, again, because we're giving you positive press. Uh, I can't believe this. Yeah. Shortens in. Ah, well, what, what happened to Albo? Then Albo just gets in. Ah, he's hopeless. Absolutely. So ho- annoying. Bring, b- b- give Tanya a go. What about her? Yeah. And then Tanya Plibersek gets in. What about the good old days of Shorten? And you know what they're yeah. doing? They are constantly vying for leadership changes because they have already sowed into the mind of the Australian public that Labor is extremely unstable, even though after Kevin Rudd's leadership changes, it would have to be one of the most stable parties in the Western world. That is true, yeah. It's really Wouldn't hard it? to get rid of someone in the Labor Party yeah. now. Dude. And let's just forget the yeah. fact that the Liberals had three la- Lib Prime Ministers in the span of like three years yeah. and also had the most amount of cabinet changes in parliamentary history. They are clearly the stable ones. So Jesus that's Christ. what they're always putting up as the narrative. And I think that it is just this constant conga line, I suppose, of trying to get Labor to change its leaders because they also know that when you're doing that, you are actually dividing the Labor Party because you're forcing them to go into camps and put their support behind someone. Everything that the press is always doing, there's this great quote, I can't remember who said it, but it was pretty much just like, when the press starts scrutinising the opposition more than the government, you know that you're in trouble. As in, like, you know that your democracy is really, like, turning into a shambles. It's profound shit. It's profound yeah. and very, very true. Mm. Uh, and, yeah, man, like, the opposition... That's weird. I didn't... It's so obvious, but I just realised... Have you noticed how the opposition in this country gets paid out way more than the government? Yeah. yeah it's what the hell is that all about? And, like, they're so desperate for leadership challenges. And because... Kevin Rudd has made it virtually impossible for there to be a leadership challenge. That they just go, How? all right, Joel Fitzgibbon has a slight disagreement about the optics of climate change. Leadership challenge. Dave Andrews disagrees. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is Dave Andrews coming up in the ranks? Can he bring Labor to victory? <laughs> Get on the beach. The, big, the bigger question is, is Dave Andrews real or not? Still getting to the bottom of it. <laughs> Labor. Why Dave Flint Andrews is Andrews. known as Dave yeah, yeah, Andrews yeah. in the media. <laughs> the shadowy man behind the scenes controlling Labor. You've heard of Daniel Andrews. You've never heard of Dave. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, I guess, uh, so Jordan, what you're fuck. essentially saying is that as a strategy... Um, they try to keep instability in the Labour Party so that they're never able to consolidate and actually get power. It's one of the many strategies that they employ. But I think the other thing that really annoys me is that you see all of these people on Twitter and stuff that are, that are constantly sitting there and, and they just regurgitate the exact attack point of the Australian while sitting there and being smug about the Australian. That's what, that is the thing that irks and makes me sit back in awe about the propaganda model, that particular point the fact that you see people sitting there being smug about one side of the press the other side of the press is saying pretty much exactly the same things they're just saying it in a way that is pleasing to you as a demographic and then they just regurgitate pretty much what the entire press really is saying and so all of them but are sitting there the- saying Albo can't do it but do you just remember these exact cunts like fucking what the fuck's his name bill short no Fuckhead on Twitter, like Osman Farouk or whatever his name is. Um, I remember him just tying off, mouthing off uh, for months on end just about, you know, oh, Bill Shorten can't do it. Bill Shorten sucks. We need Albo. As soon as Albo's in, Albanese is the worst opposition leader. You know, like just changes like on a dime. All of them do. Whoever the Labor Party is, he's not good enough. Uh, get rid of him. That's right, always. I, I, well, how about this? Yeah. How about this? Oh, sorry, uh, no, no, Mitch, no, no. you can go after this. But no, like, no, no, go. Um, you read that crikey article, right? <laughs> the well, look, the, the, of the, the year. year. You know you're talking to the Arshat of the year over here. <laughs> Oz, her. You know his accent is right. <laughs> uh, and yes, it is. Racist it Arshat is of the year. So racist. 
free. How many people in the comments know what we're saying? Because I know what you guys are saying. <laughs> <laughs> but like, okay, so the, the question was that, look, uh, the, the article says a lot of shit. What's his, whatever his name is. But like, I guess the gist of the article was um, <laughs> labor has no story. They don't have Fuck anything off. for uh, the, the constituency or the people. They can't, they're, not, they're unable to sell a dream. Which is yep. why no one's voting. It's always for Labor's fault, isn't it? Can it's I never the cunts of crikey, in? no. But this guy pretends to be a Labor fan. As political yeah. analyst of, uh, head political analyst of Friendly Geordie. Is that my title? Chief political editor. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and Ali is your trusting apprentice. Yeah, yeah I am his trusting apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and our focus is on Dave Andrews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Focus well, on we're getting David. to the bottom of it. Get into the, yeah, who is he, and is he real? Huh? Yeah, um, but yeah, real chief, party power. Chief politi- uh, as as chief political edi- editor, as uh, as you know, slash dash, eel killer, yeah, dash, <laughs> slash eel monger, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 eel monger slash political <laughs> mongrel <laughs> mislove. Yeah, dash like uh, you know slaughterer, animal slaughterer, uh, a halal chef, halal chef. Um, I well, you know, I've done a bit of. I, I did do some. I watched uh, fucking. I watched fucking Albo on Q and A with Hamish McDonald and watched some. I read about Albo's history and if Albo can't win it for Labor or doesn't rather, I shouldn't say can't because I think he's doing everything right. I think he's killing it. I think he's super likable. I think he's he's doing everything right. And if he can't or you know if he doesn't win it for Labor, no one can. Or at least in the, in the, no one can for a while. It's just going to be a massive dry spell. I mean, and that's what I think. What I the see. What more do you want? He's a moderate. Dude, He's I'm just fucking I'm Bill Clinton. It. I'm not saying get rid of Albanese by any means, but once Albanese's stint is done, which will be after 15 years of being dictator, I think yeah. Dave Andrews. Has got it. Dave yeah, Andrews. Dave Why Andrews is the silent assassin <laughs> in the background. Dave Andrews is not going to take it. Come yeah, on. he's he's the new he shifty short, and isn't he? But he can't because like no, it's not it's not very often that politicians move from state to federal, right? That's not that smooth a transition. He's not going to be like Dave Andrews from Victoria, Prime Minister now. I don't no, think so you, you're mistaking Daniel Andrews with Dave Andrews <laughs> yet again. <laughs> <laughs> like this has gone too far. Are you talking about an imaginary person exclusively now? Well, he might be imaginary, but that's what he wants you to think. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing you he didn't exist. Listen to this. Listen to this. James M. K. Albo is kind of underwhelming. I put him in the Beasley and Cream tier. I, Beasley was sick. What the <laughs> no, hell I do know you people want? Like, I, what the fuck does Australia Beasley want from a is Labour? His favorite. What, what does Australia want? Beasley was a was a empath man, same as Albert. Like th- these are like hardworking, good people. I'm losing my mind here. Yeah. Who the fuck else do they want? It's amazing because you really did trigger Miss Love because you just named all of Miss Love's favorite <laughs> Labour leaders. Did you, just you just did. You yeah. actually did. Beasley, I, Simon. I read Crean. That. Well, Simon Crean's my favorite as well. I read that and I was thinking that's not going to go down well, Miss. <laughs> that's, that's that's such a bullshit call, my friend. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> But like, he's underwhelming. Biden's underwhelming. Are you happy he's in? I think the world needs some more Bidens. What the hell's wrong with underwhelming? Is ScoMo not underwhelming? ScoMo is actually pretty underwhelming too. Right? <laughs> 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 oh, I'm just going to put it out there. Like, I, 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 don't you, I can understand if you think Albo is underwhelming. Dude, I don't. But you have to admit, Scomo dude, Albo, is Albo, he's Albo's appeasing the uh, the uh, the corporate sector. He's talking down unions. He's appeasing like uh, he's also appeasing working class people by not abolishing. You know, he's sticking to like Labor's roots, but he's not. He's not doing the shorten of. You of just like it that he mentions uh, the color red less often. Pretty much, he's he's doing the balance. And I think that he'd be up for it as well. Look. If you said we should change the color, he'd be like, well, you know, I could chuck it at your cabinet. We can have a chat about also, it. Also, stop yeah, doing the what? list, dude. Apparently, win. we get a lot of comments. Dude. Why people go like. Well, it's completely unnecessary to do a lisp. But he has one. Well, it's those endearing. people are not going to like the fact that I've made an entire character out of Anthony Albanese and the only character trait he has is that he's got a lisp. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> but I I've like replaced him, words with... He did, a, he did a really strong... Uh, well, I thought I personally thought it was, uh, it was really emotional and strong speech in the parliament where he was talking about... Uh, it was just one of those moments that got me. He was like, uh, Prime Minister, do you know that girl whose hand you shake... Who, whose hand you forced to shake? She lives in the van. 
because she can't afford anything. And like I was just looking into um, uh, talk about pork barreling. The bushfire relief money is only going to liberal. Cons- I'm not. This isn't a conspiracy. Like the Blue Mountains. Well, in New South Wales, it is. Yeah, in in New South, but like Blue Mountains, you were living there. It was fucking. I don't ravaged. think federally they've spent any. Still, Zero. I don't know. Yeah, they, they still spent nothing. They asked money for five things: reasonable amount of money, like basic stuff, like getting rid of the weed that comes right after a bushfire uh, season, um, getting rid of uh, uh, making a database for some of the trees so that we know exactly what the progress is. Um, they made five such requests, right? They got zero funding for a, for a constituency, the Blue Mountains area. Okay, sure, it's labor stronghold, it's, but it's, it, its entire economy is dependent on tourism. Yeah, like it, it's, yeah. It, it's and one of it's the, the prime, Blue Mountains. It's, it's world one, heritage. Yeah, it's one of the prime candidates to receive bushfire relief. Zero. You know what's weird? The, the Everything Lith- got rejected. But Lithgow's a national seat. And they still probably didn't well, get shit. Well, Lithgow, I don't no, know No, Lithgow, Lithgow, yeah, but Blue Mountains is Labour. It's, right. It's oh, really? Struggle. Yeah. So you go down that hill and it's just like, welcome to the Nats country. No, what they're always doing, the, the whole point of pork barrelling yeah, is fun. you put it into marginal seats that you hold. Mm. That's when pork barrelling works. If you have a safe seat, they don't get a cent. Mm. If you are a safe seat for the opposition, you don't get a cent. You get money if you're a marginal seat. And, and, and right. uh, Jiggly Jiggly Bros just said it today. Too. Jiggly Puff, yeah. <laughs> Jiggly. Yeah, he said that. And he, he just it. He he like, basically outright said it. Like, what do you fucking want? But honestly, uh, if Albert, like, I well, don't understand like the bushfire, it's hate. a little much. Like, come on. When I was growing up and I looked at Australia, I thought it was a place of wonder. Like, mm. I didn't, mm. like, it's, it's kind of disappointing to know that, like, something like a natural disaster, like the... Black summer Still don't give a is, fuck. Is, is a it's fucked up. It's don't horrible. care. Don't care. It's horrible. It's, yeah. it's you. You think like it's beyond partisan. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's just <laughs> self serving. That's it. Eel barreling. <laughs> eel barreling. <laughs> Can we start calling you the eel baron? Yeah, for sure. Eel baron. Um, but what do you guys think? You like him? I think you're coming around. What do you think of Albert? Is he? Does he I, fucking inspire you? Is enough? he disappointing? Is he? Does he inspire you enough to get up and vote like well, Samo does? The fact that he is not. <laughs> well, the fact that like he's never come out to support a Stalinist takeover is losing some points. Hey, Shorten had his time, all right? <laughs> Shorten. Had- Honestly, like, I, I, and it didn't work. Like, I'm all about a, a, a moderate centrist that can basically just like sense, you know. Uh, like just, just just someone that can you know your Caesars no no but just someone that sort of like can can yeah a, a centrist that just does the right thing and that's him down Dude, the line I'm calling it yeah Scott Morrison is not winning the next elections but you know why I don't think he's winning I'm he going doesn't. to extend the point that I was making last week that if Albanese wins it's because Scott Morrison pissed off Google I think right. that if Albanese wins it's because he's pissed off the planet. Everyone's angry at him. Who? Albo? No, uh, ScoMo. Oh, right. Wait, who, who else is angry at him besides the, the three US, ones? China, Great Britain, the EU? <laughs> all true, of them true. fucking hate him. Right. And like, you know, like even Boris Johnson, you know when he was supposed to speak on that climate panel and Boris Johnson was like, who's this Muppet coming up on here? Oh, Scott Morrison, hey, he's having a laugh. You're not coming up on there yet. Really? <laughs> I, I, I don't know why. I don't know why the Boris Prime Minister of Britain is the guy that was uh, making, making the eel pie. pie. But look, there was a surprising <laughs> turnaround where breaking it here in Friendly Geordies, he did win leadership from he's Boris really Johnson. Dude, the real Boris Johnson Dave is basically Andrews. Hugh Jackman. No, not Hugh Jackman, Hugh Grant. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's really posh. 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 Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave, the, re- the real Dave Andrews. There you go. <laughs> but yeah, I think that honestly, I'm feeling. Much better about this election than I was the last one, even though I thought that Labor would squeak through in the last election. But I just remember just everything not working in Bill Shorten's favour. Nothing. This time, I think that actually, as Anthony Albanese said, in the fourth quarter, the wind will be at their back. I do think that the wind is at their back this time. That they <laughs> Scott Morrison has Murdoch in his corner, and I think that the international fulcrums are in Anthony Albanese's, and it will be interesting to see in this election which one has more power. Because this is the whole thing about who the leader is. And this is what this woman was saying, that I imagine is a retired teacher who lives in the Blue Mountains. The one that just said, I just want there to be a Labor government. I don't care about all these tactics. Look, the, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who the Labor leader is. Like, 
I make this point in my stand-up show. What? John Howard had overwhelming magnetism and charisma. <laughs> It's my job to listen to he his did. speeches for his for the stand up shows. I remember listening to him speak Respect and thinking your opposition. He was a very charismatic man. <laughs> my favorite. Charismatic. The little charismatic. goblin that I miss. Charismatic. Bye, John Howard. Sex guard. But Dude, uh, he was not charismatic. He was he didn't have an ego. That doesn't mean he's charismatic. No, no. I, that was sarcasm. But right. I, I get it. I But like the thing is John Howard was so boring to listen to and it's my job to listen to him. First off, Miss Love fell asleep in the car when we were playing his autobiography and while he was asleep, farted in protest. So his, <laughs> his body his body rejected John Howard's voice. You're not going to change the channel? Well, I'm going to change the environment a little bit in this car. Seriously. That happened. I while making that stand-up show, was listening to old interviews with John Howard and they were so boring that I thought, fuck it, I'm just going to read the transcript. Mm. Reading text <laughs> was better than listening to John Howard. Yeah. And even when, like, the, the audio book, usually the audio book is better than reading, yeah. right, in terms of engagement. Yeah. <laughs> reading John Howard's book was way better than listening Whoa. to it. Because his Dude, voice fucking is so funny. Shy. I mean, his voice is funny. Yeah, but that's it's... like a testament to how bad your public speaking skills are. That as soon as you speak, the person goes, give me the transcript. <laughs> <laughs> is he from Sydney? John Howard, Howard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where? Earlwood. Earlwood. Earlwood boy. I like Earlwood. Huh. Yeah. And that's the reason that he hates unions so much and was in Why? the book that if you were paying attention instead of farting. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I know that like 20 hours <laughs> of straight fucking John Howard on tape is enough for the average man. But fuck It was a non-stop barrel of laughs. I do think that it was better than, uh, you know, Eddie Murphy's Dangerous or whatever the fuck it's called. Fuck off. I think it was really good. But, uh, yeah, in it he has this point where he was saying, uh, I remember, and you can tell that this is the thing that shaped his entire political views, just like... My first memory of politics was my mum pointing to him winning the 96 election at an election party and saying, you see that, Jordan? That is a bad man. And I reckon that that was just, you Your know, ad infinitum 30 years. But Your mum, she did a number on you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, go on. But I remember him just saying, my dad was uh, doing fairly well as a small business owner, owning a mobile self-service petrol station, one <laughs> of the first self-service petrol stations in Australia. He found it rather difficult to make a profit once the unions unionised his workers and at that point I realised unions needed to be regulated more effectively. I was seven years old. <laughs> All right, what's your counter? Like I said, <laughs> charismatic as fuck. What's your, what's your counter? I hate now, unions now, now. Now I'm voting for him. Like, what's your counter? Yeah, what the hell are you talking about? I think that... Uh, Jump ships, it's time. Labor sucks, liberal rocks. Look, Bow. maybe that's the experience of it. I would imagine that, uh, you know, the... Uh, Certain unions. Union, unions. But this is the thing, like... By the time John Howard was in, the unions were so regulated. Yeah. <laughs> they were like some of the most regulated yeah. unions on earth. And then yeah. John Howard came in and went, this has not gone far. No, nah, dude. Like, in all seriousness, he was straight up cancer, wasn't he? <laughs> like, uh, let's be real. All right. Can we, uh, Levy, like, can we move on to like one topic which I wanted to discuss really badly? Yes, you, I will. But I will just say this that just before we go, it doesn't matter who the leader of the Labor Party is, except for with the one exception, and I truly do believe this, of Kevin Rudd. I think that any other Labor leader, doesn't matter who it is, if the winds are on your back, you will win. It's the same with the Liberal Party. They really are just a standard bearer. They can't, they, they can't have this grand strategy that's just going to make them, uh, you know, sneak from behind or something like that. No. Pretty much all they can do is just... Bill Shorten thought, okay, what we'll do is we'll just put all of our policies out and hopefully they'll just filter through to the public. That didn't work. So then Anthony Albanese says, all right, we're not going to put out any policies at all and hopefully that will work. It will work. 
Maybe. Uh, that's maybe. what I predict. I predict as well. He's hey, doing chief, everything right. Uh, chief uh, political correspondent knows a yeah. thing or two. It is Ridgy. Yeah. Maybe you should get. Maybe you should fucking bring an eel into Palm. Like, don't be scared. We used to eat these when Captain Cook came. Don't be scared, Mr. Yeah. Prime Minister. <laughs> yes. No, he's going <laughs> to... I mean, if, the, if, if, if but, but in all seriousness, if the method that he's sticking to now doesn't work, we should just throw in the towel and just... Just move to the country and support shooters. But this and is fishers. the whole thing. This is what that crikey article was saying. It was just sitting there, uh, as every fucking crikey article ever says. It's just insecurity masked by smugness. The publication, <laughs> and <laughs> what a fucking combo! Yeah, I know. That's a well, happy it is meal. pretty much just new town in written words, <laughs> and yeah, he was just that. essentially saying nothing. But the. I guess slight view of what he was saying was that I just need to tell a story, tell a story, tell a narrative, tell a story, fucking yada yada story, story, my ass. <laughs> Everyone always just says these vague things. There's all this, like, uh, what, what's it called again? Like couch quarterback or something? I haven't heard that. You know, the same thing of just like Yobbo sitting in a, uh, like in the stadium or something like that and being like, he should have passed the ball. What the fuck? Oh, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's everyone. Every fucking pundits, writing, political pundits? commentator. Yeah, that's what they are. They, they, they are just pundits. Yeah. Everything that they say is always just broad, has no specifics to it. There's no yeah. rationale behind it either. It's just an endless onslaught of cliches. And and I, I, I can remember them saying the exact same things about Beasley. But like my my yes. counter argument of that story thing is <clears throat> I can almost agree with it. But give me one story that anyone, like, right, left, maybe, like, your extreme right has a story. Yeah. The story is, like, get rid of immigrants. It's it's a bad story, but they have a Where? story. But when you're to- <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. But when you're talking about, like, um, <laughs> even center right, where's the fucking story? Their story is business should go on as usual. That's not a fucking story. That's yeah, just what's Gladys Berejiklian's story? Getting on with the job? What does that so mean? So what these, yeah. like, a lot a of these, like, uh, inspiring commentators story. that are supposed to be left, like that crikey comic, I can't remember his fucking name. I don't either. I read his article and it was, he, he's talking about, like, there's no story, but, like, he's pretending that every other political party has some story. Uh. We're still trying to figure this new world out. And man. then he's, like, little shitty justification about, oh, Scott Morrison, everyone can see through him, but, like, they kind of respect that. See, they, they always say these fucking stupid things to justify the other stupid shit they're saying. What do you mean? Everyone sees through Scott Morrison, but they respect it. They can see through him because they think that that's what a politician should be. Oh, okay, so you've done Phony. extensive polling of the Australian public and you've come to that conclusion, have you? Well, first of all, where the fuck's the polling to begin with? You're just saying things. That's it. Like, I, I really... Yeah. really annoys me that there's just this entire class of pundits that just th- their entire job is to just regurgitate cliches and they're not even aware of it. I don't think, mm. I don't even think they're aware of what their piece in the propaganda model is. No, I think and they right. obviously have no understanding of the propaganda model because he just asides the media's bias on the Labor Party in one sentence and it's just like, so get over it. Yeah, that's a good comeback when nobody is allowing you to state your platform. Maybe the reason that the Labor Party doesn't have a story is they're not allowed to say their story. That might be one of the reasons. Did you notice something that when I was talking to all of the Labor politicians in an extended interview, that they're really smart people that have like extensive knowledge of the country and like figures and facts and where it should be going? Mm-hmm. Do you ever hear that in the press? No. It's, it's fr- Dude, I'm telling you, like my personal experience. Sorry, like this is yeah. this is legit. Uh, my <laughs> electorate is Craig Kelly's electorate, right? Yeah. He's my local... Uh, is that Lib? Uh, uh, yeah, Lib, Lib right. uh, MP. Every election season, Jordan, um, the lady, this Indian teacher lady who contests against Craig Kelly, it's a strong liberal uh, um, seat, but I meet her every election season at the train station. She's passing on leaflets. Oof. One time I spoke to her a little bit. She's an extremely intelligent woman that has worked. She's an older lady that's probably worked three decades in public service, has done amazing things. And, like, you can tell that she would be a real... Like, I would be proud to have her as my MP. She just seems like uh, one of my uh, mom's friends that's, like, really intelligent and smart and has, like, a... She seems... What what I'm saying is, like, she happens to be Indian, but she seemed like one of us, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course. Um, Craig Kelly, on the other hand, is a fucking moron, right? Like, you... The people know about him now because he's been like training for vaccine. You made a video about him. I know that motherfucker for ages. He's mm. my MP. He is a he's a horrible human being. What's like, his credentials? Is just like 
banker. No, no, not it's even, like furniture not salesman. Yeah. <laughs> Doors like plus. liberal backbench material, which is always real estate agent worked at that fucking glowing out of business tile store in Parramatta. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucked. That's fucked. It, well, he what is. He I guess about? he is one of someone, but like, but his entire thing. He's also a moron, man. Like. He's now famous for pausing on these like uh, conspiracy theories of vaccinations. Right. But like everything about him is bad. His take on he's basically like he's Ted Cruz. Really? Yeah, he's Ted Cruz yeah, that he lives is. in Australia yeah, yeah. that no one knew about until like literally six months ago. Shit. His climate record is fucking shit. Like just some one of the worst human beings on earth. But it's sad that, like, dude, he wins it every time. He crushes our electric. That's really like, strange. Not there. this time because of the Common Sense Brigade. He will still comfortably win, but it won't be an absolute rinse. <laughs> I think that like, I do actually want to know what her name is, and I want to start spreading memes for it and because I think yeah, it might yeah. be a little more effective than handing out pamphlets <laughs> at the train station. Yeah. And like calls. Lady. And local poor calls. Like, poor lady, she's every, man. Dude, she's, she's doing her stick. But see, I like Dude, that. that's this really sad. That's the only the only you know, two people that I've ever seen doing that or heard of doing that is that lady and Tony Abbott. That's it. Mm. <laughs> Which is why, again, I'm really sad that Tony Abbott lost his electorate. Because if any electorate should be liberal, it's that one. What, and man, the fact man. that he used to stand there at the ferry just being like, hey, remember me? I used to be Prime Minister, you know. <laughs> uh, that's nice, Tony. Hey, have a good trip. Just in just Kalara. Stop at Bowman, get some bugs. Ugh. But he got he got booted out by an independent. Yeah, come on, it was his time time to go. Tony, well, how is no, it, how no, it's never Tony Abbott's time how to go. Are our policies even different. I huh? bet they weren't that different. No, it was just she said. I think that climate change is a big issue. Oh, well, Can you do anything right. about it? No. <laughs> <laughs> just take one for the team, North Sydney, and elect Tony Abbott. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back Joe Hockey. Bring, oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. Joe could fuck off. Oh. Yeah, Joe Tony Abbott off. needs to be okay. in there. I well, like actually, the fact that he just looks like one of those wise aliens in a movie that comes down and is just like, oh, I built the pyramids, you know. The member, Dude, Joe, the- Joe Hockey <laughs> reminded me of like every young liberal I met at uni. Joe Hockey. They're all Joe Hockey. Oh, they are. Joe Hockey was yeah. North Sydney, but now it's like some guy who's like, I, I think he's like a gay doctor and he's like just another just sort of just, you know. Stand in like ran just another back. That's the whole thing. Those rich seats, Wentworth, whatever the fuck that one is, at French's Forest or whatever. Oh, it's called North Sydney. Yeah. They are the most detestable seats in the country, but I do think that they do deserve to go to Labor candidates. Even the one for Hornsby, like uh, you know, Pov North Shore or whatever. Yeah, it is. Those ones should be liberal, right? But. It's just the worst of the worst when it comes to the Liberal Party, and that's why I really think that Tony Abbott was voted out, and it's because it just didn't have that he's not one of us feel about him. That man should be in Hughes. Tony Abbott should be in Hughes. <laughs> Tony Abbott would kill, kill you, it really? in Hughes. Kill it. Yeah. So wait a he second. shouldn't be in French's Forest. Malcolm Turnbull, that kind of ilk. Yeah. Dave Sharmas, they should be there. But Joe they, they're Joe the Joe worst Hopkins. of the worst when it comes to the Liberal Party. Again, because I think that when you look at Tony Abbott, clearly... Sense of civil's duty, and uh, you know, clearly has convictions and beliefs, and wanted to enter politics for the noble aspiration of making sure that the queen is still on the two dollar coin. <laughs> and and I can stick with that, you know, um, I can groove on that. But just people like Malcolm Turnbull, people like that doctor Hockey, or whatever, yeah, it's Dr. just like Zimmerman I'm gay. It's yeah. just like <laughs> you suck. Like they're just they're just the Man, like. Thera. Don't take that out of context. <laughs> Not because she's gay, just because she's a... No, but it's just like, that's, that's their, like, it's always the same thing. Or like Dave Sharma just being like, I believe in climate change. And then they just go into the Liberal Party and then soak up these safe seats. It's but they, they, like they, they pretend to have some kind of conviction or something. Man, you, you know, know what? It's I've like, been it's like... nothing. It's the Green thinking. Syndrome, right? Huh? It's the Green Syndrome where it's like, I'm an ideologue. Can you implement any of your policies? No, not by a long shot. Okay. No, th- that's what I'm saying. The wets aren't that. At least I like the thing about Tony Abbott or something like that that are <laughs> ideologues and they go into the Liberal Party. They stand for something. But I swear to God, people like Malcolm Turnbull do not stand for anything. They're just corporates. Turnbull. Whatever the fuck is yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. thing that they're supposed to say is the thing yeah. that they say. That's Wait, what so Wentworth wants, though. That's that's their guy. Remember how like yeah. when they he kind of pissed them off, he just a little bit because of being under pressure from like your Craig Kellys and stuff for the refugees. 
just in spite Wentworth elected that uh, independent uh, doctor lady wait out for like six months. And then next elections, um, she won the by-election. And the next election, uh, fucking Dave Sharma won, right? Yeah. Wait, so... They're, they're and look at it. If you look at it, they're just always the lowest of the low. Tony Abbott, during the bushfires, out there on the front line, uh, holding the hose, didn't want any media coverage for it. Dave Sharma, what did he do? Oh, COVID's hit. Yeah, okay. I'm just, uh, we, we're doing a Qantas bailout, are we? Yeah, I'll just buy a, a million shares in Qantas. Oh, look at that. It just went up. It just, it just uh, went up by like fivefold. I don't you fancy that? I'll just sell now. Dave well, Sharma's oh. like half Indian, half Israeli, right? That's his too. I think so. Something like that. What, um, well, that's just a bad combo for a package, <laughs> anyway. Like, what are you doing? Are you trying to make Ali's me hate you? Worst nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> so wait, Turnbull doesn't have his seat anymore. <laughs> no, what, no, dude. He dude, retired. what are you doing? <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, no. I thought he could still have it. Kind of Wait, what do you think? What do you think is the prime minister? I just took extended vacation. No, I thought I thought that he's. he's like, I thought the he whole was the prime minister, isn't he? No, I thought he. I thought he was just like <laughs> that. Job's over. Back to the seat. Yes, that's what I thought. No, his was that job's over. Time for Mojito. Tony oh, actually no. did that. Tony was Tony, the only yeah, one, and he, he lost was. it. Well, he yeah, he it. shouldn't have done. So, is Abbott, what does Abbott do now? He's out of politics. Is that right? No, I think I, actually, isn't he no, like doesn't the he go to head of Indigenous Affairs. Or oh, of course, <laughs> is he? I like thought he was in England. Yeah, That's not a good idea him. to give that to him. <laughs> I thought he was in England, just like in just England? all of a sudden being like, "All right, I'm just gonna teach the British what's what about Brexit." Really, really? What the hell is I he don't know. About I don't know. Brexit. The last I heard, he was heading some... Uh, it's a big fuck you to the Indigenous community, but he was heading some Indigenous department for the government. And also, like, once one of the highest uh, civilian awards or something. I don't know, something like that happened. But anyways... Um, <sighs> Politics is a weird uh, game, Boys, mate. miss, here's, here's another thing. Here's what's been happening, and I want to talk about it. <laughs> Do you yes. know, like, uh, Rihanna... Do I like Rihanna? No, 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 no. Yeah, I know Rihanna. Oh, but yeah. We all like Rihanna. Come on. Right. But like I hate Rihanna. <laughs> I want to get that on record. I, she is my most hate. Don't clip this out of context. There's nothing to clip out of context. I do just nah, hate Look, uh, Rihanna's stocks went sky high in my books because yeah. Rihanna gave. she is fucking with the Indian government. Oh, yeah, that's what? right. <laughs> Tell me. What do you mean? So um, there's these uh, farmers protests that are happening in India. I want to talk about the farmers protests, but it's got an insane amount of attention recently because uh, Rihanna, it all, all it takes is yeah, for no. like a superstar it's to so go dumb. on Twitter. It's so dumb. And, and all she did was she attached an article about the protest and she wrote, um, why aren't we talking about this? This created a huge commotion in India. Mm. Greta Thunberg. Remember yeah. the, the one that, yeah, uh, yeah. and she, uh, she also did the same thing. She's like in solidarity with Indian farmers. The Indian police filed an FIR against her, and they want to arrest her. Who? The Indian <laughs> government. Th- Thunberg. Yeah, Delhi <laughs> police. <laughs> Delhi police. So what's happened is, it's crazy. These farmers protest. Like, um, uh, farmers have literally blocked our trees to Delhi and uh, the capital. And um, they're just they're asking to repeal these three new laws, and they're they're saying like we've come here with like six months worth of dal. We're just gonna fucking chill here. They've just been chilling there because they want to repeal these laws, which is uh, um, which is pretty crazy. Like they've paralyzed Delhi. What's the what do they they want higher wages or something? Well, what the the British uh, sorry the the Indian government has done is um, they've passed these new laws. They've basically deregulated the market. And there's... The, okay, so, like, there's this whole sort of um, story of how this came into being. Mm. But basically, the the Indian government is, uh, is now saying that corporations can deal directly with farmers okay. to buy the crops, as opposed to the government being a guarantor that have, like... Um, Fixed prices. I see. Isn't that... Uh, this, is, this, that this will explain to... This will... It won't make sense to any Indian, but it will make complete sense to uh, every Australian. Mm-hmm. The, the reason why this farmer's protest is happening is because India went straight from Whitlam to John Howard without a Paul Keating in between. Say that again? Um, Say that sentence one more India time. India yes. went straight from Whitlam yep. to a John Howard yep. without Paul Keating in between. So it's just... 
capitalism unhinged. Yeah, what happened was like I, in the seventies, India had one of the worst uh, um, governments. No droughts. Like oh, they tr- basically have had no food. Gotcha. Right. They literally had no food. I'm very ignorant on this subject, unfortunately. But yeah, go on. Huge population, basically no food. Um, the the crops were horrible. So what they did was they um, the entire government apparatus was like, all right, how do we fix this? They asked Lyndon Johnson. If he could help out, mm. Lyndon Johnson provided expertise and uh, these new g- genetically modified seeds, which were kind of new at the time, even for the U.S. Mm. And uh, Indians, they started like planting that and the crop prices fucking skyrocketed. No, sorry. The crop produce skyrocketed. Yeah. So they instead of like not having uh, enough crops for their own population, they're now at a point where they're creating three to four times more than their population. And their population is a billion. So they're producing a lot of fucking crops. Um, but what, what, so what's happened is that initially in the 70s, when they wanted to encourage people to, uh, to farm, they came up with basically what would be um, subsidies or guarantors that if you aren't able to sell your crop, the government will buy it at a fixed price so that you don't have to worry <coughs> about what happens, keep growing this stuff. And it really, really worked. And what they the way they did that was that they organized this uh, middle sort of um, management that would basically take the uh, crops from the farmers and they would uh, sell it to either other corporations or government would buy it in case that there wasn't enough. The Indian government has now come in and has basically just said, fuck all of that. Farmers deal directly with corporations and that way they'll get a better price, which is completely false. They def- cause definitely won't. They definitely will. The other thing that a lot of people right. don't talk about, which has, which is one of the reasons why India is in this situation, it's hard for like a lefty like us, t- for me, or for to admit this, but one of the things that is causing this problem was that they divided up the lands and gave it to farmers. Like... There was a land reform, mm. and there used to be huge... Like in Australia, for example, there's huge land holdings that um, th- these farmers that we talk about, they've got huge swaths of land mm. that they're producing, and they're, that's why they're able to like sell it to China, other Eastern... Even the US, and at an affordable price, because there's just economies of scale. There's just so much. In India, around yeah, like this... Like one-sixteenth of an acre. Yeah, because uh, they, they had massive land holdings that were part of these like barons that would treat their farmers horribly and so then the socialist government came in and they divided up that land and they gave it to farmers which was i i like i thought that was one of the greatest things you could ever do and it was successful it really helped the farmers it actually increased the produce as well because farmers were more motivated but what's happened now is that and this is a problem particular to india that and and sorry this might trigger some indians but like i i genuinely believe this because of their caste system you only have one profession that you let your family... So a farmer in a village cannot switch to any other profession easily, particularly if that profession is for a higher cost person. So social mobility is really hard. So all of these divided up land, they, they kept having kids. Like a farmer would have a large number of kids because they, he wanted hands for the farm. And now there's a lot of people with very, like, some of these farmers, like, 85% of the farmers that are uh, uh, are protesting have uh, land holdings that's less than two hectares. That's fuck all. In a very competitive world market now where the way you are able to, like, the way Australia is able to sell a lot of its uh, crops is we've got the so best farming techniques. Hectares. We've got, but also, like, we don't flood our lands. We use sprinkle system. We use water really efficiently. We know... We're a rich country, right? So we can do this sort of stuff. Like we, we know exactly what's the best way to produce all of this stuff, and we create like insane amounts of crops, and we sell it to the world, including India. And India is in that situation where, like, they're just saying that, and because they were subsidizing all of this stuff, they they were giving <laughs> minimum guarantee for crops. They just thought that they're losing money, and so fuck all of this like uh, socialized system. Uh, Every individual farmer now has to deal directly with corporations. And farmers are afraid that they're going to get fucked over because 
and rightly so, they're saying like, look, we're a small farmer. We're already in debt. You know, the highest suicide rate in India is amongst farmers. Same as Cunts Australia. Keep killing themselves. Same as Australia, right? Australia's yeah. Very apparently, high. farming is just one of those suicide-prone professions. Dude, it's a, it's a yeah. lonely job. You it's can a be lonely ba- job. Dude, you bankrupt. Your, your wage is based on rain. For Man, fuck's Indian sake. farmers Damn. are fucking selling kidneys to like pay a debt that's seven hundred dollars. You know, like it's it's. But it's surely the intense. margin between like socialized and private isn't that big. Like, wouldn't be if the Indian government's supporting it. The Indian There's government. There's no yeah. welfare system there, so right. it must be fuck all. And that's why I'm saying like India went straight from Whitlam to John Howard did without having a Paul Keating in between. Something needs to be done about the way their crop system or their crop market works. It's true that it's really based on a old 1970s paradigm where there was a food shortage and their government was subsidizing it. But like without someone like Keating in between that can like work it around for the farmers as yeah. well as the corporations, you just had someone like Modi who is strong arming the entire situation. And he's saying like, no, you'll be better off with uh, these massive corporations because you'll cut off the middlemen who are corrupt and all that shit. But like, ha- is it pretty much the same deal in Pakistan? Different in Pakistan, much less of a problem, even though Pakistan's productivity is low. But Pakistan, because it was capitalist from the get go, they never did the land reform. So there's still large land holdings. Weirdly. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you yeah. still have feudal lords Dude, there. Dude, I have feudal. Uh, some of my friends were. I feudal forgot about lords. that. I forgot that the Prime Minister of Pakistan has to just like every now and then just be like, okay, uh, that was a very good uh, meeting with the Prime Minister of Tokyo. Okay, uh, now it's time to send in uh, Lord Farquhar and uh, Lord Erston, and then like in will chime in just like two knights. <laughs> It'll just sit down. <laughs> 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 have, to, have to negotiate with them. Hello, Seven. gentlemen. Did you keep your swords at the door? Oh no, they're in here. Okay, this this negotiation is going to go pretty one sided. And, and Lord Farquhar, how can we lower saffron prices? Ting. <laughs> no, but like the Pakistan have their own version. Like they're they're like, because the entire parliament is filled with like these land laws that have huge swaths of land they just said they're like okay so new law uh government will buy every sugar cane that i own <laughs> <laughs> so there's like a fucking mafia they've got their own problems Wait. too but like okay. what i'm saying is like india has uh, pakistan is just inefficient and corrupt like they can if they wanted to work around it and if they just pulled out their socks they could have but india is not in that situation at the moment like this whole I, I think they'll backtrack from a dumb dumb Coming from a dumb dumb, how many jobs are regulated by the government in, in Australia? Like, what what industry is regulated in Australia? Pretty much every everything. industry, everything is regulated in Australia. Really? Well, everywhere, everything's regulated. Yeah, true. Like it, the the Indian market for farmers is still regulated. Yeah, it but just depends how much regulation and what regulation. So, like for instance, Hospo is regulated in that there's a well, there's O H and S standards. That's one. Sure, and you get like a uh, time hey, and sorry. a half. I'm, I think I'm going to take this call. One sec. Yeah, go for it. Go for <laughs> okay, it. Go for it. All right. Bad, like we'll just uh, take it on here. We'll talk about the <laughs> Indian <laughs> farming market. Uh, I'll and take it over. It'll be a breeze. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take the stride on this one here. So look at the unprofessionalism of your apprentice, Miss Love. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. He's not ready for the big He's leagues. He's never killed an eel in his life. Um, so, you know, India has two options. No, uh, <laughs> so like... So Sorry about that. I know, it's all good. It's just <laughs> like... I guess, I guess, uh, comparatively, what's regulated in America? Because I'm trying to get, a, I'm trying to get a more broad perspective of this in terms. Again, of everything's regulated in America. So what? Okay, give me an example of a country that has very little regulation in terms of. Well, one of the least regulated countries on earth, I think, is Jamaica. Barbados. Right. Yeah, something like that. Is one of those. Right. Tropical. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But every, sorry, I, I missed what you guys talking about. Like, everything is regulated. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, it's, yeah. it's the amount of regulation and also, like, regulation for whom. Sometimes things are regulated to benefit the corp- corporations. Like, in my opinion, this certainly is. Like, the Indian situation is definitely aimed at helping corporations because corporations are saying, why are we... We can determine the... But, okay. No, um, but also, like, they're, they're like, why are we buying 
expensive shit because from their point of view this is what the indian corporations think they're like the, the, the indian government you're fucking up the market yeah, yeah you yeah. come here you start promising them a minimum thing which drives up the price for us you start hiring these bureaucrats that have like all of this middleman stuff which is which is uh difficult for us i'm going to just start buying crops from australia because even though they have a way better standard of living it's somehow cheaper that's from their perspective but okay yeah but, but what well, well, I guess what I'm saying, uh, what I'm curious about is like, and I'm not saying, you know, I'm not of the, I'm not necessarily like the free market can be good and bad. And it seems most often, most often than not, it's bad for a lot of people, but to a degree. But uh, I guess what I'm saying is like, could, couldn't this be an opportunity for the free market to not like some of those, some of those farmers could make more money. Not less money. So, well, that's so the whole thing. thing. If you are enterprising, would. you will yes. make more. Yes. He, well, that's you, not necessarily no, no, a bad Yeah, thing. you're right. Enterprising, you will make more. But why, why is that a bad but thing? But also, if you're a big farm, if you have a large farm, you will earn more. But if you're a fucking shitty two hectare out. farm, be you're out. just going to be at the mercy of your overlord. True. The prices will drop because then they'll come yes, at like the, will, the, yeah. the, the equilibrium. And you know what's the worst thing about this? One of the reasons why India um, uh, instituted these new laws was because of us, because World Trade Organization, because of that stupid moronic view that they have free market is good for everything, have been pressurizing India to take off this subsidy. When they say that, what they're saying is like they're basically taking away money from some of the poorest people in the world mm. in the garb of free market because they are like from the World Trade Organization point of view is that by again putting these subsidies you're reducing uh, um, international liberalization because from their angle, if Bangladesh is, uh, is producing wheat at a lesser price than India, then India should buy wheat from Bangladesh. Right. And they're, they're so just like, they're, they live in this ideological world where <laughs> they think that's going to be good. But there's a lot of fucking like, you know, 80%, it's a ridiculous amount, like 70 to 80% of the entire workforce in India is somehow connected to the uh, agricultural sector. Really? really? Yeah. Because a lot of their manufacturing is also manufacturing of crops. Oh, of so course. like things like textiles and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So it's a huge chunk of land. And like it, most of the people are in the farming sector in India and their life is just progressively getting worse. Like but surely India is, has a big like tech fucking, you know, like uh, industry. Too. Big, yeah, big, but like, yeah, not, but I doubt that the, like rice farmers are going to yeah. be moving into there. Why not? Well, you know what? Or that you should say that because I'm pretty sure that that was the finance minister of Pakistan's view. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this guy speaks to me. The guy that doesn't want to take about, talk about KFC, Such right? Such an idiotic thing to assume that like these poor farmers, once their like price goes down with the free market, they're like, I guess you know what's really working. High end silicone <laughs> microchips. That's what I'm going to start doing from now onwards. Get him an iPhone. No, it, and it, leaving it, aside the fucking cultural barriers that Indian society has. Also, it would cost where they'd be like their neighbors might kill them from choosing a, pr uh, for a profession that was. This you know, is right. this is like just advice in that in climate because now I'm just thinking about what would I do if I was one of those Indians. But this is just because I have the knowledge of what happened in Australia. But something similar happened to like the banana industry or something like that. But pretty much Coffs Harbour got fucked over. You know what the enterprising ones did? They just said, oh, okay, we'll just start farming blueberries. We'll start farming macadamia nuts They're or something. So if you start farming something niche yeah. oh, on like that little teeny like piece of land. Or something. Yeah, yeah, something yeah, yeah. really specialised. Like, yeah. I swear all most of northern New South Wales is just producing macadamia now. <laughs> macadamia yeah. nuts. Yeah, well, they stole it from us. But could they yeah. do that? Could these Indian farmers sort of just be like, we're moving to more high-end shit like saffron or like certain spices? Well, they'd have to buy the seeds in the first place, which I like imagine they would be really They can't afford it. Like yeah. what Jordan is saying, is yes. It, yeah. Like if you're enterprising, then yeah. it will be good for you. Like you might end up making more money. But then, th yeah. But yeah. then that's not for that's most the of the people most of the farmers will yeah will actually suffer from this and it is fr this is what i was talking in on a broader this isn't really this is just more a philosophical thing but i was talking about this to you earlier to tie it in back to the eels it's like all these eel places are like hey, we're, we can't afford to rent yet it's all going out this is gonna be the last time you can have jelly deer what a fuck and like the the downside to capitalism is that you can't have jelly deal well, as it easily it in prices, the East End. It seems to me, <laughs> yes, it seems to me that it prices out. <laughs> it prices out Dang. more niche. Mishlove gets passionate. It prices out more niche <laughs> industries for uh, cheap, you know, like 
everything will become Starbucks. It's the same theory where it's like the uh, those Indian farmers will go for like they'll they'll go for whatever's the cheapest, what whatever's essentially what's a monoculture. You know that's why Monsanto is so rich because they're just like yeah, people want these four fucking things. Sure, in the West there is. You know what? They don't even want those four things. It's just America has those subsidies for those yeah, four America things. America also has, and right. they have just huge surpluses. Really? That's Apparently, like there's just the entire US. dumps of butter in Sorry? the US. Say that again. They just make rubbish tips for butter. Yeah. So the government just buys it and goes, "Okay, uh, we do not need that much for Walmart," and then just makes. I guess just fill the Grand Canyon with milk. Well, that's so the free, uh, funnily so enough. That's what here's another like. I'll just sorry because this is something that needs to be known for someone that's following this farms thing. That's what like India does too. You know all of that um, the subsidized crops that they buy from mm. uh, farmers that weren't able to sell it to other places. They take that and they take all of that uh, crops and they have done something in 2014. They came up with the Food Security Act where the bottom uh, 80 million Indians who are just like the poorest of the poor, right? Just cannot I'm afford shit. Like the ones that you people. see on TV there, they give them out. Uh, there's like government um, stores and they go there and they give them free um, dal. Uh, for dal, rice, wheat, all that shit. And that so comes from the I want to be a poor Indian. Supply. That sounds mad. I can live off of that. Jesus. You can. You basically are a poor Indian. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, except you live like one. Yeah. You just want lettuce back. So, uh, and and so the, all of that crop <laughs> that the government buys at a subsidized rate to help the farmers goes to the poorest people in India, and by right. these laws, they're going to stop doing that. So the un- so, one uh, of the consequences not only is it fucking over farmers, but where are you going to get all the fucking crops that you give to the eighty million poorest people in your country? So do you think it just it's one of those things that works? Do you think the yeah, free market's yeah. a myth? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, it's an 100%. absolute myth. The free absolute market myth. is perfect until things are going good. Once it goes bad, then the free market is completely incapable. Yeah, of that's true. Like that. That's true. That's true. You know that, where the yeah. free market might exist? No, but even then, you've got the regulation. You've got the heaviest regulation. That's stupid. What? I was like just going to be like cocaine. I think in porn, but right. it's so regulated that it's illegal. <laughs> what? Cocaine. Coke. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was just yeah. trying to think of an well, industry. I was thinking maybe the black market, but the black market would have less regulation and just one blanket regulation, which is mm. you can't do this. Yeah. Well, and in a way, it's the freest because they just ignore that. But uh, yeah, that is very sad, though. That is very sad. And look, you're, you know, I don't, I don't think it's unreasonable to want to like feed the bottom eighty the poorest eighty million yeah. of your fucking. And like, country. if if someone if someone from India is getting triggered because I understand that, look. There's a reason why they're they've got like they're trying to arrest Greta. It's a who's yeah. who's triggered? Is this a big? Is this a dude? Bi- it's is so this a big it's issue? so huge. Like apparently in India, if you say that you're like with the farmers, you will very casually be labeled a traitor. Wow! Like people are saying that you're a terrorist if you're doing that. Like there's this Bollywood actress that's like fucking famous, and, she and she's said. going on Twitter and she's like calling a Rihanna, she's she's paying at Rihanna <laughs> heaps and she's <laughs> calling her like a moron that is no shit and she's like you're all just like she was saying like all you want to do is for China to take us over like they're doing with your own stupid country in oh the shit. US. Yeah, like, sounds like our audience. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like our audience. Sounds, I'm with you. <laughs> um, yeah, the mole on so the it's inside, it's a, it's our real, Bollywood actress. It's a real hot button issue, and it's it's like apparently you can you can get arrested for supporting the farmers right now. But what I'm to, what I'm trying what I want to say to those people that believe that I agree with you, like the the current way that the uh, the system was set up is is not is not it's not going right. to last long. It was meant for the seventies, and it was meant for certain circumstances that you need to change. No, but but you <laughs> need to change it in a better way. Like you, ca- you need to have your priorities right. If all you can think about is your fucking big ass corporations, yeah. then this is not going to work. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like you went straight from Whitlam to John Howard. Yeah. You needed a mm. fucking Paul Keating in yeah, between. That's a, you're right. That's able to make it He's work right. for the farmers too. So what would be a good middle ground? Like keep that. Keep just maybe just subsidize less. Just that subsidize less or actually create a regulation. No, body. yeah, that's what that's what Keating would have done. I reckon. Yeah, he would have gotten rid of the regulation, and then he would have installed new regulations that were saying that we're putting this in, but corporations have to give us a grain guarantee that's, or something. That like would that. be a good solution. A grain guarantee, if, as if, in they kind of ban. If the, the government, so basically, like the, the you know all the excess grain that the corporations aren't using, he'd just be like, you have right. to put it at these food depositories or, or something. Also, create a, a dispute oh. resolution me- mechanism where 
the corporations aren't able to muscle these poor yes, farmers, yeah, right? That's the yeah. big thing. Right now, the thing, the, the protection that the Indian government is giving them, well, you sign a contract, and if you have a problem, you go to the court. A poor farmer yeah. versus rich corporations, who do you think has an upper hand in that court? Like, yeah. you need governments to, like, guarantee, basically, you need some, like, a big brother for those farmers to, like, muscle the corporations when need be. Mm. That you can't just, like, yeah. fucking abuse these uh, farmers. So... So a free market person would just, like, Gavin McInnes would just be like, the small farmers are lazy. They just want their free check. That's what he'd say, right? I bet you there is an Indian Gavin McInnes saying that right now. <laughs> oh, there's How so many. And what's with every Bollywood so- This is getting old. Let's come <laughs> up with a new dance move. <laughs> they do. They are. They are Tell you what, that. like, that uh, guarantee was built for the 70s, and so was this. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, on a it's, funny it's, it's note, very serious. India hates Greta Thunberg. These days, fucking hate her. They want her in jail. So, but it's, it's interesting. That <laughs> well, not India. It's at least the police. But it's interesting the that the government is so on on the side of just sort of aband- uh, letting down the the, the farmers because it's like. It doesn't seem very uh, compassionate. You know, it doesn't seem very it's not compassionate. Com- you know, because they're, you know why? They're, because they're too evil. <laughs> like, uh, well, the government's Back evil? in the day, farming or like primary sector of farming used to contribute close to like fucking 60 to 70% of the entire GDP. Now, for India, farming accounts to like maybe 15 to 20%. Shit. So they're like, fuck it. Oh, uh, I see. And also, they, they <coughs> this is how I bet you some of these ones are probably thinking. It's like, look... Even if they fucking die, we just fucking import grain because, <sighs> and they're not wrong. Like it might be cheaper in the international market than because they keep subsidizing. That's so it. wrong. So they're just like from their perspective, they're like, who cares? We're uh, covered from all bases. They die. They. You know what I'd do if it was one of those gross. farmers? I'd come up with some kind of like hippie commune and just be like, we'll just treat the grain ourselves. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. It's India already. Yeah, well, halfway there. well, that's the problem that they don't want that. They don't want to trade them themselves. They want a government institution to be able to buy the grain from them. Damn, that's, that's the what the government is market. saying. Like they're well, like, well, do it yourself. You huh? just explained what they they are doing. They are doing a hippie market thing, huh? dude. Well, they are doing that. The, 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 if they did, the a government market, is saying the like, you just sell it yourself. Dude, like we, we don't have themselves. nothing to do with it. Yeah. Find a corporation. Yeah, but that is what I'm saying. Is just don't. Sell to a corporation. Corporate. Dude, why just don't sell it amongst yourselves okay, and you have the subsistence yeah, lifestyle. Dude, how about this? <laughs> just, just make it the beach. Have the movie, the beach. But like, uh, from just their perspective, the they'll say to Jordan, we've been doing that for fucking thousands of years. Yeah. Dude. It's we'll new go back for to that. you. <laughs> this is what True. we were doing. We, we want iPhones. Yeah, we cars. want iPhones now, dude, bitch. If it was us, Jordan. Oh, is that what they, this is all about? iPhones, is Well, no, but they want like, they want like to be able to, they want an income, but they could just eat the grain. God, we're such cunts. Well, even if that was the case, surely you just come up with your own, kind of like what they have here, your own farmers' co-ops. Yeah. Uh, like that's a, what you're going to have to move to. But that's a very like rich person thing, isn't it? No. No. Well, you no, no, no. Farmers' co-ops are for like yeah. poor dairy farmers. So what? They just, they just like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll trade with each other in terms of goods and services. No, what they can't, you know what it is. A, a co-op is just another word for unions, but... It's because they're farmers, so they're just like, yeah, not having any of that. Oh, so what it's are they? Co-op, so, okay. So what are they? It's just like pretty much that uh, guy that makes the jelly deal in Britain, just being like, hey, we don't use the G word in here. This isn't gravy. This is liquor. <laughs> it's gravy, dude. Uh, not in here. It is. I'll word. die over that. Or you saying that Arsenal isn't that good? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us tonight. It was a oh, splendid Jesus conversation. Christ, Please yeah. become a patron. Yeah, for more uh, on Join on Patreon, Lincoln. Friendly Geordie's podcast, Patreon. We appreciate your support and we'll see you guys for the update. Jordan, do you want to say goodbye? Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate the fact that there was, I think, 900 people listening to a story of Miss Love gutting a deal. Nearly you do realise yeah. that there are people that do that day in, day out. They got thousands of heels a day. I do know. But everyone's sitting there going, that was very brave. I know. Of you. So but it was, I, I, can't, I cannot yeah, sit there yeah, and say that you're a wimp. Yeah, you really can't. You can't. Don't, don't get on your fucking high horse now, Mr. There's no high horse for me. Outside. I should be that sire that gets on his back as 
you get up on your high horse. I'm just your <laughs> stool from now on. I am truly in uh, awe of your fish gutting skills. Yeah, well, look. Uh, and Nafer goes in, the guts come out, and that's what Friendly Jody's Corporation is all about. Yeah. <laughs> Who's the, uh, look. All right, I, thank yeah. you. Miss Love, you want to say something? Yeah, I'm as, I'm, I'm as big a national icon as uh, Don Huey. Bradman and uh, Farlap for killing the eel. So if, but if you want to support this national <laughs> icon... You know, your moral Patreon. high horse is the equivalent of Don Bradman riding Farlap. That's r- <laughs> that's how high you are. There you go. He could have been a jockey. He was short. Join us on <laughs> Patreon. It's been fun. We have fun here. And we'll see you next week. Hopefully uh, we're not cancelled this week. Bye, guys. <laughs>